Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz. Welcome to Corvallis. On a busy college football day across this country, this might be one of the better games you see. Why? Because last year, Boise State had the best offense in the country, and they're off to a great start this year at 2-0. and And Oregon State has one of the best running backs you'll see all season. And in fact, you're going to get to see him, and that's good news. This was last week. This is Steven Jackson. He's big, he's fast, he's rugged. His last carry last week, 166 yards, but a sprained left knee. He left the game against New Mexico State. He did not return. It was a question mark throughout the week. A couple days ago, Oregon State said he would play. That's good news. Steve Priest joins me now. How much will he play? Is he 100%? He is 100%. He will play as he normally plays. All his body will take. In fact, Steven Jackson plays 110% of every game and every play. And what does he mean to Oregon State's offense? Wow, uh, 38 touches a game. That's receiving and rushing the football. That's 46% of the touches Oregon State has. If you take out the interceptions or the incompletions, then this guy's at 62%. He doesn't affect it. He is Oregon State's offense. Okay, we get to see one of the best running backs in the country, and we'll get to see one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Maybe you might not have heard about him across the country, but in the Northwest, people know about Ryan Dinwiddie. And oh, by the way, there's a fine tailback at Boise State this year, David Michael really an exciting offense. You know, last year, Boise State leads the nation in total offense, total points. They graduate eight starters on the offensive side. They have Ryan Dinwiddie back. The team's still getting 500 yards a game, 43 points a game. And now, the most efficient passer in the country from last year is augmented by a guy who's second in the nation, 167 yards a game, including 235 last week against Idaho. Boise State was 12-1 and last year. They beat Iowa State in a bowl game. But you know what? The Broncos in their history have never, never defeated a Pac-10 team. And they haven't seen a Pac-10 defense like this in a while. It's one of the strengths of Oregon State. Boise State out of the whack. Oregon State out of the Pac-10. They meet in Corvallis. And we start it next. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Steel, the number one brand of chainsaws worldwide. Over 35,000 in the house, another sellout here in Corvallis, all of them wearing orange, most of them orange and black. There are some orange and blue, some fans that have made it over from the Treasure Valley, over from Boise, Idaho, to Corvallis, Oregon, for this matchup between Oregon State and Boise State. And it is an absolutely gorgeous afternoon for college football. 72 degrees right around kickoff. Pleasant, sunny, wind is not a factor. It's a very fast AstroTurf surface here in Corvallis. Let's go down to the third member of our broadcast team, Candace Kruger. Candace? Thanks, guys. You know, today we're going to see two coaches who, bottom line, know how to win. They exude class both on and off the field and truly lead their teams by example. Ironically, these two meet for the first time at a place that is familiar to both of them. OSU's Mike Riley returns to Beaver Nation for what he says is a dream job. He knows this place quite well and feels right at home. No surprise, he grew up right here in Corvallis, played quarterback at Corvallis High School and led his team to the state championship. Now on the other side of the ball, Coach Hawkins knows a thing or two about this area as well. Before heading to Boise State, he comes just down the street at Salem's Willamette University, where his team won 77% of their games. I spoke to both coaches yesterday, and I asked them, who do you try to emulate when you're on the field? They both said their dads were also coaches. Coach Riley's dad coached right here at OSU. So, Rich, I think these guys were molded to be coaches and molded to win. We'll see who comes out with the win today. And Candace, it's not that big a stretch to say that Dan Hawkins was almost coaching in this game as a Beaver head coach. When the Beavers hired Mike Riley, the number two man on their list was Dan Hawkins. Of course, Riley replacing Dennis Erickson, who replaced Mike Riley when Riley got things going and then went to the NFL and has returned back. Thank you. So it's Oregon State and it's Boise State as we get set to go. Look at Hawkins, 42 years of age. His third year at Boise State. Dirk Cutter, of course, was the coach that brought Hawkins aboard, and then Cutter headed to Arizona State. And the Broncos will get the football first. And here we 
it go. David Michael watches it roll through the end zone, and Boise State will get it at their own 20-yard line. The Broncos, of course, as we told you, the best offense in the country last year, averaging over 501 yards. They only have three returning starters, but one of those is their quarterback, Ryan Dinwiddie. And Dinwiddie, the senior, has put up big numbers. His numbers this year, you can see the career yardage. He's closing in on 6,000 yards in his career. Tough to say exactly what type of set Boise State will be in. They are so multiple. They'll have so many different looks. And on first down, Dinwiddie completes his pass to his tight end. And the Broncos are underway. Here's the offense for this Boise State team. There's your offensive line. Darren College and Rusty Colburn are the other returning starters with Ansel McLeod and Tutogi up front. Michael is a great tailback. Tim Gilligan is the veteran receiver. Lausma the tight end. Jerry Smith the flanker. And Greg Swenson will be at the fullback spot. Second down and six. On an end around, a big hit along the sidelines. And the Broncos giving it on a little bit of a misdirection. You take a look at this, this is very typical of what you hear from Dan Hawkins all the time. You mentioned the multiple offense. That's not multiple sets, that's not multiple formations, that's not multiple personnel, it's all of the above. And that was Lee Marks on the reverse. And it's first down, they mark it right at the 30-yard line. Dinwiddie to throw. And a quick throw. Again to the tight end, and again, Trent Lundeen, the senior. The transfer from Northern Arizona, Jonathan Pollard made the stop for Oregon State. This is a very good Oregon State defense, a talented front four. Bill Swancutt is their leader, three and a half sacks with Rothwell, Siegert, and Edwards. Very good linebackers, Siegler in the middle. Jonathan Pollard is the guy that Dan Hawkins was concerned about. And Brandon Browner gets the start at corner with Eric Williams, Newson, and Turner at the safety spot. Second down and short. Dinwiddie got time over the middle, and it's broken up nicely by Lawrence Turner, the strong safety. It'll bring up third down and short. Oregon State, very interesting because they don't ever substitute with situations. And you see Lawrence Taylor, strong safety, covering the tight end. Don't bring in that nickel back ever. Gilligan in motion. And in and out of the hands of Gilligan. And Boise State will have to punt. That's not a frequent occurrence, Tim Gilligan dropping a football. Dinwiddie put it on the money, and the Oregon State defense is held. Kyle Stringer, the punter for the Broncos. Boise State has very good special teams, and a whistle with some movement on the line. Start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. In Corvallis, Oregon State, Boise State, for those of you that have just joined us, Boise State's first possession ending in a punt, and Cole Clayson of Oregon State fields it right at the 31-yard line. Oregon State from the Pac-10 Conference, and Boise State out of the whack. Oregon State coming in at 2-1. and one. Derek Anderson is their quarterback, and Beaver Nation has been a little rough on him. Completion percentage at 45%, but last week, after the Beavers dug themselves a pretty substantial hole against New Mexico State, he brought himself and his team back for a big win. Exceeded his percentage way up there. It was 55, 56% last week. And show the leadership the Beavers are looking for. Play action. And Anderson with time. A short throw. Newsom made the catch at the 45-yard line. He is the favorite target by far of Derek Anderson. James Newsom, the senior wide receiver, 
That's his 16th catch in only his third game this year. Just a simple play pass. Everybody's expecting Steven Jackson to get the football. You see him there decoying into the flat. Nice catch by James Newsom, the other half of this Beaver offense so far this season. Oregon State from their own 45. Anderson play action. Again over the middle. Again got his man. And again, it's Newsom. First down, Oregon State at the Boise State 38 yard line. Newsom at 6'1, 207 is extremely strong and a very, very talented wide receiver. Absolutely. And, and truly the number one target. He's one of the best receivers on the coast. Oregon State, it looks like, is just trying to take advantage of this 4 4 basic setup that Boise State plays. They're going to have to throw the football to take some pressure off their own running game. And that's the man that Boise State is keying on. Play action the first two, and finally Jackson gets his first touch. And that's what he can do as he picks his way inside the 30, down to the 29-yard line. Corey Hall, the redshirt freshman linebacker out of Glens Ferry, Idaho, made the stop for Boise State. Oregon State offensively. You know, the Beavers averaging 466 yards per game. Kilkenny, Losey, along with Brock, Sanchez, and Ninehouse up front. Jackson in back. Tim Ewis is a tight end. They'd like to get the ball to. Mike Hoss, the other wide receiver, along with Newsom and Kenny Farley. And Jackson gets it quite literally and figuratively on a nice hit by Hall, the redshirt freshman, as he shot through and stopped him at the 33-yard line. Boise State is a very good defense. Eight returners from last year's 12 and one team. Williams, Oldham, Allen, and Roberts up front. Travis Berger is a local Oregon kid. You've seen Hall already, and Andy Avalos is their emotional leader. Gabe Franklin's a fabulous corner. He's got 11 career picks. Julius Brown, Chris Carr, and Wes Nurse also in that secondary. On third down, Anderson, blitz coming, gets rid of it quickly, and it's broken up. Justin Brown on the corner against Newsom. That's a fine play by the senior out of Stockton, California. And those two should know each other. They both grow up in the same, they both grew up in the same town down in Northern California. You're looking at Kirk Ilnimi coming in to try a field goal. A week ago, an emergency appendectomy in Oregon State's all time consecutive field goal kicker. 17 in a row, had to miss last week's game. Here he's back, 17 in a row, and here's his first After kick. After an appendectomy, a 51-yard attempt, it's got the leg, and he's got it. 18 in a row. And nary a stitch burst on that. <laughs> And Oregon State has the first three points of this football game. Yeah, coaches say, are you all right? He was in the hospital 10 days ago, and he's got Oregon State on the scoreboard right now. Just underway, the Beavers have a 3-0 lead. There's a look at Ilanimi. Of course, he had the appendectomy now. He's not stupid. He'll kick on field goals, but he will not kick off. Well, and that's a difference, because he's got a huge leg. Gets it usually over the end zone. Michael, a yard deep. And David Michael with a nice cut. He's out across to the 25-yard line. And Boise State will get their second possession of the ball game. Look at David Michael. How versatile is that? He's your leading rusher, and the average is 28 and some yards of kickoff return. What a weapon. You can see that Ryan Dinwiddie, who really because of numbers and because of his senior year has become the man and the leader of this Boise State team. A fabulous sophomore year, an incredible junior year. Remember, he missed four games last year. His quarterback rating was 188. That would have been an all-time record had he not missed those four games. Dinwiddie got time going deep and he overthrows his intended receiver. I love Boise State's offense. They've always got someone testing the seams deep. Dinwiddie's always got a receiver down the seam, on the edge of the seam, never straight down the middle. You don't see a straight post. Fun offense to watch. Two of five. Remember, he had one drop.
Broncos keep it on the ground to the 27-yard line. Last year, of course, Brock Forsey, who's now plying his trade with the Chicago Bears, was the guy. David Michael showed signs last year in the last couple of seasons, not only of being productive, but of being uh, a starting running back. I don't think anybody thought that he'd be averaging 167 yards a game walking in to this ball game. Second in the country to Chris Perry of Michigan. Shotgun snap and flags. And Boise State moved early. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five yard penalty remains third down. Well, if you take a look at this, you'll see it on the left side of your screen. Left tackle is the one who backs out a little bit early, but uh, Rich, I think you would too if Bill Swancutt was the guy rushing over there. That's, that's where Oregon State brings their pass rush. Boise State in two ball games has given up six sacks. And now the Broncos face with third down and 13. In trouble is Dinwiddie, hidden drops. And a flag is down as is Dinwiddie. Dewan Edwards, one of the Beavers to get there, holding Boise State. And obviously Oregon State will pick up the flag. Beavers bring five men there. Sigler comes up the middle, puts a little more pressure on, but the, the rush was really from the outside and Rothwell and Swancutt Juan Edwards just forcing the pocket right backwards into Dinwiddie. And Kyle Stringer has to punt again. A true freshman out of Texas and a wobbly kick. And not much of a roll for Boise State. And Oregon State will have fabulous field position inside Boise State territory at the 47-yard line. Broncos have great special teams. Dan Hawkins himself, the head coach, is in charge of those special teams. It's something that he really started when he was the head coach at Will Lamets, which is about an hour north of here in Salem. And when he was at Will Lamet, he wanted an edge because his team wasn't that athletic, and he decided it would be on special teams. And boy, did they get good in a hurry at Will Lamet. Went to the national championship game of NAIA football in 97. Now on first and 10, this is Jackson. And Steven Jackson pounds it inside the 40-yard line. Travis Berger, the senior out of Coos Bay, Oregon, made the stop for Boise State. When you see Steven Jackson run, you watch him behind that zone blocking, just waits, very, very patient, finds a hole, and now watch the moves. That's 233 pounds running there. And it's just incredible what this kind of an athlete can do. 166 yards last week. Anderson setting up a screen to Jackson, and the ball bounced off of one of the defenders. I think Julius Roberts, the junior defensive end for Boise State, got a hand up, and it will bring up a third down and short. Third down three for Oregon State. Just find a way to get the guy the ball. That's the system at Oregon State. Big day already for the Pac-10 with Oregon's win over Michigan. Arizona State is at Iowa. Oregon State here at home against Boise State. Blitz coming. Anderson unloads wide open. It's caught. Joe Newton, touchdown. The red shirt freshman from Roseburg, Oregon. Anderson hit him in stride, and Newton is in the end zone, and Oregon State is off to a very quick start. An all-out blitz. Take a look here. You've got safety coming, linebacker. Excellent checkoff by Derek Anderson. He reads it real well. Joe Newton, as you said, a young red shirt freshman. Huge target, six feet eight. And Ilanimi now for the point. And 
Oregon State, sluggish at times last week, looks sharp today. Derek Anderson to Joe Newton, untouched. And Oregon State has a 10-0 lead. Eight teams will compete for postseason play, while two have already cemented their places in the playoffs. The rest of the matchups, too close to call. Fox brings you baseball's division series and an exclusive home to the championship and World Series. It begins September 30th on Fox. In Corvallis, they're on their feet. Oregon State, a 10-0 lead over Boise State. And the Broncos, Donnie Heck, gets to the outside, and Heck across the 40 into the 45-yard line. And now the Broncos have outstanding field position. Their offense has yet to get on track, and that's a little bit of a surprise here, noting where they've been and what they've accomplished and who they've got running their offense. Great blocking on that kick. In fact, it was funny. David Michael, who's uh, one of the leaders in the nation in kickoff return, was not in the game in this situation. Heck just takes the ball. Watch this blocking. Just super. The lead back in front. Great job by the lead back car. Dinwiddie, this is Michael. And David Michael to the 50-yard line. Eric Williams made the stop for Oregon, for Oregon State. Michael and the Broncos last year, 12 and one. They were eight and zero in the Western Athletic Conference. And they didn't just win, they dominated in that conference. They finished number 12 in the country when it was all said and done. Michael again, trying to get outside, he does. And Michael is close to the first down. Flag comes down right at midfield. Juan Edwards made the stop for the Beavers. Take a look. You, you love it. You got to keep your eye on that football. It's tough to find. Looks right, right there at the tight end, number 80. That's a death grip on a linebacker coming to the outside. Andy Weldon. Beavers have a decision to make because the carry was not enough for the first down. It would be third down if they declined the penalty, but the yardage is too much to turn down, and it'll mark it all the way back inside the Boise State 40-yard line. They call him the Hawk, and what a job he's done. Second down and 16. Oregon State shows blitz. And here they come. Dinwiddie's throw over the middle. It's deflected and incomplete. And that's the second time he's had a pass drop. T.J. Akery, the junior out of Pocatello, Idaho, could not hold it. To take a look at this, this offensive series as well as the series before, and it really looks like Dinwiddie's getting rid of the ball quick, probably anticipating the pressure. Right there, pressure was still a ways away. Receiver didn't have his head on a swivel to get there. Third down, 16. Dinwiddie going to go deep. Sideline, incomplete. Dryson James was the intended receiver. He jumped right out of his shoe. And it's incomplete. Eric Williams on the coverage for Oregon State. And the Boise State offense, highly touted coming into the ball game, is misfired now on their third possession. Thus the third appearance of Kyle Stringer. Cole Clayson 
at his 16. With a lot of room, and Clayson is upended right at the 30-yard line. And Oregon State, who stuck it in the end zone in their last possession, will get it at their own 31. Look at Andy Avalos, starting linebacker. And again, you, you watch these hits. This Boise State team, as well as Oregon State, as you take a look at Avalos, starting middle linebacker, they play their best players on special teams because it means something to Dan Hawkins and the Boise State team. What a hit. That would be a lid lifter. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Anderson on first and 10. And his throw is caught by Tim Ewis, the big tight end. And the senior out of Eugene, stopped by Travis Berger at the 47-yard line. The Oregon State offense looks like the Boise State offense right now. <laughs> Oregon State knows they have to get up the field against this pressure, particularly on first down. They've got a, a very good game plan so far. It's get the tight end up the field, stops the blitz. Steven Jackson, midfield, 45 to the 43-yard line. Wes Nurse, the senior out of Federal Way, and there's Jackson, who, remember, is just a junior. As you watch this blocking, which is super, just the zone play, there's a reason now why there's some openings right there. And what's happened so far with the play pass, Boise State is back into a conventional 4-2, 4-3 defense. For the Bronco 42, Anderson hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. And the Broncos finally get the Oregon State quarterback. Andy Avalos on the blitz, kept his helmet on, and introduced himself to Derek Anderson. Great defensive call. Avalos comes from the back side on that play pass, and he gets there. Good speed by number 40. Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator for Oregon State, had nothing but good things to say about this Boise State defense. He said there isn't really one dominant guy that they play so well as a unit. And one of the better coach defenses he thought they would see all season long. Second down and 10. Anderson's throw deflected and incomplete. Joe Newton, the man that caught the touchdown and rambled 51 yards was the intended receiver. Last week, Derek Anderson was booed here at home. And the Oregon State coaches felt it was actually good for the Beavers. Not necessarily to be booed, but to struggle, to hear the boos, and then climb out of the hole and beat New Mexico State. Third down and 10. Anderson, lots of time, going deep. And Haas is there, but he can't get it just out of his reach. Mike Haas, the intended receiver, that's the arm strength that Anderson has. And for the first time today, this Oregon State team will have to punt. Eric was only going one place, and that was deep. He waits real well, and this is really about as perfect as you can throw a pass. Only one guy's gonna touch it, and it's Haas. Oh, so close, but excellent coverage by two Boise State defensive back. This has been one of the better Boise State offensive plays in the last couple of years, and that's a punt return, but Tim Gilligan, who's second in the nation, doesn't get to touch it as Carl Toby sticks it in the end zone. Derek Anderson and Oregon State on top, 10-0. Oregon State off to a quick start. Let's check in with Candace Kruger. Guys, you mentioned it's another sellout here in Oregon State. The fans are packing the, the stadium. Many of these are students, and would you believe that school has not started yet? It doesn't start until the 29th. Several of the players said they love that because they can really focus on the game. Rich? 19th consecutive sellout, and for 35,000, they do make a lot of noise, Candace, in this stadium. Boise State now, their fourth possession. They have not looked good offensively. Some drop passes. Donnie Heck with that carry for the Broncos. There's a look at Beaver Nation. They will increase the size of this stadium over the next two years, upwards to about 50,000. As Reeser Stadium will get a facelift and enlarged and an upper deck along that student side. 
Right now, 35,000, and every ticket's been sold for the last four seasons. And they certainly play well in this stadium, non-conference and in conference. Shotgun Dinwiddie, blitz coming. Screen pass, Heck makes the catch, and he's got room to go. He's 30, he's 40, and he's knocked out of bounds by Lawrence Turner at the 44-yard line. It's a big pickup of 21 yards for Boise State. You want to stop a pass rush, you screen it, you check through with it. Excellent call there by Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator. Nice job by Dinwiddie, looking away. Obviously, the linebacker has that cover coming to the outside, and Heck does an excellent job of making the turn, making the cut, getting open for a big game. Broncos out to their 44-yard line. Tony McPherson in motion. And Dinwiddie got time and just threw that one over the head of Tony McPherson, the intended receiver. And Brandon Browner on the coverage for Oregon State. Brandon Browner just came back from some off-field issues, had to get his uh, academics in order. He's missed the last game and a half, really. He didn't practice until Thursday this week, but back to his starting position. Second down and 10. Dinwiddie steps into the rush. And to midfield, close to the first down. He may not have gotten it. Even though he had a chance to maybe make some contact and get it, Dinwiddie stepped out of bounds, and I think he's shy about a half a yard. Well, you saw the look on his face. He was laughing. I think he figured out he was about six, eight inches short of this. But look at the athletic ability. He sees the coverage is there. He takes advantage of the little hole and, and just makes a mistake. He, he does leave himself a little bit short. No one will ever question his toughness, though. Last year, he broke his ankle against Arkansas. They said he'd be out eight weeks. He came back in four. Third down short. And flags fly, and this may cost Boise State another five yards. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense. This will turn this into third penalty. down and six. Still Dinwiddie came back in four weeks after they put a plate and seven screws in his ankle. And the night before he came back, a game against Fresno State, he was cutting the tape off his ankle. He slid his foot open and took 30 oh. stitches. He played the next night against Fresno State, and all he did was complete 19 of 22 for 406 yards and five touchdowns. So don't ever question how tough this kid is. Third down six. Dinwiddie over the middle. This one is held on to. And the Broncos have got their first down. Looked just exactly like the play Oregon State ran earlier. Derek, Oregon State sent people, and they released the tight end for the easy play. Derek Schumann, the true freshman out of Eagle, Idaho. Boise State runs in eight receivers. They run in four tight ends. A lot of people play in this offense. This is David Michael who's hit by Eric Williams and flags come down as well. Bill Swan cut there to finish it off. Nice play by Williams, but I think he got a hold of his face mask unintentionally. Take a look at the corner coming in. Excellent corner force, beats the blocker, and just inadvertently gets a hold of it. Nice play by the cornerback, but it cost the team. Looks like they cost him 15 on that, so he must have not released it. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, he didn't yeah. release it. And then, obviously, Michael took a pretty good shot. Oregon State led the nation in penalties a year ago. They were leading the nation until last game, again, trying to cut them back. Well, you can ask Dan Hawkins of Boise State the same question, and he'll give you the same answer. Penalties have been a problem for the Broncos this year. But Boise State comes in at 2-0, wins over Idaho State and on the road at Idaho. Oregon State at 2 and 1. Their lone loss, a two point loss down in Fresno. 
Boise State on the move. Michael hit and dropped. Dan Rothwell made the first hit. Boise State scripts their first few plays, the first 15 or 20. Certainly it's by down and distance, but you see so many of these different formations early in a game with Chris Peterson as a, as a coach. They want to know what defense is Oregon State's going to use for certain sets. Second down, shotgun, Dinwiddie. Here comes the blitz. Down he goes, Richard Siegler. Good look at the athleticism right there. That's a linebacker. Dinwiddie's pretty nifty, but Siegler makes the play there. Comes through clean. Mike Singletary eyes, Rich. He's made some Mike Singletary type plays in his career. First team Pac-10 linebacker and Dinwiddie doesn't like what he sees and he burns a timeout so Boise State will call a timeout Dan Hawkins in his third season Hawkins as we noted earlier was number two on the list reportedly for Oregon State to replace Dennis Erickson when Erickson left and went to the San Francisco 49ers the Beavers coach search First took them to Mike Riley, and that was an easy one because Riley, of course, started this program on the upturn before he went to the NFL. And then Oregon State, in looking for the best next young coach in the country, zeroed in on Dan Hawkins. And had the Beavers not hired that man, they would have hired Dan Hawkins. Let's check in with Candace Kruger. Candace? Guys, when I sat down with linebacker Richard Siegler of OSU yesterday, he said every time they're on the field, they plan to party at the Rock, which is just what they did in the last play. You see, they call the ball the Rock, and their goal is to get to the Rock. When they do, they're going to celebrate or party at the Rock. It sounds like a lot of fun, especially for a linebacker. <laughs> Well, if there's a strength to this Oregon State team right now, it's their defense. The offense has, in the first three games, shown signs of being productive and played very well in this ball game. But the defense, as you've seen so far, has been very good in this one. Third down and a bunch, 21. Dinwiddie got time, steps in, still looking and throwing. And Gilligan makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. And the Oregon State defense holds again. Well, this is a defense that's really rebuilding this year. Lost a lot of players to graduation, including a couple of cornerbacks. And so you see a lot of new guys in this lineup. But they play a lot of people. The people who are playing this year as first-time players got a lot of minutes in 2002. We've seen a 51-yard field goal from Oregon State's Kirk Illanimi. This is Tyler Jones from Boise State from 50 yards on a high snap and a low kick, and this one isn't even close. His long is a 43. That might not have made it from 43. And with 441 left in the first quarter, Oregon State holds on to a 10-0 lead. Mike Riley and the Beavers next week start their Pac-10 conference schedule. Arizona State will be here. And of course, I don't think the scout team will have to change a whole lot from this week to next week because Dirk Cutter, who was at Boise, is now at Arizona State. The offenses are very, very similar. Oregon State going with Dwight Wright on the ground. And Wright is across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Oregon State schedule, Arizona State at Cal. Cal getting better. They beat Illinois today. Washington won today. They handled Idaho. Washington State is down to New Mexico late in that ball game as well. Arizona has struggled. Stanford trying to get back on their feet. Big win for Oregon. And of course, look at that last game on the road at USC. 
good schedule for Oregon State. They've got a lot of big games at home. Washington, of course. Anderson Woo. got his tight end. And Oregon State has a first down. Tim Ewis with the catch. Flags go down after the tackle on a gain of about 13. Nice play to Ewis as you see him getting off the field. And then just, I think, a late hit. Offensive lineman for Oregon State downfield just popped somebody after the play was over. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. After administration of the penalty, the first because the line to gain had been made, Oregon State. first down. In this ball game, Mike Riley has preached that the Beavers must clean up the penalty flags. Dan Hawkins' team has already been hurt by penalties in this one. Such huge factors early in the season for Oregon State. Their Fresno State loss had more penalties, uh, more penalty yardage than I think the Beavers had rushing the football that day. So it's first and 10 now, Oregon State. And Derek Anderson will burn a timeout. And so the Beavers will talk it over. With 3.44 left in this first quarter. Over 35,000 on hand in Corvallis to watch this one. Boise State, the nation's leader in offense in the 2002 season. There's some Bronco blue in the crowd. Boise State has come a long ways, but the one thing that their program has not accomplished is a win over a Pac-10 school. 0-8 oh, in their history against the Pac-10. Of course, they beat Iowa State last year in the Humanitarian Bowl. They've had some impressive wins, but have yet to beat a Pac-10 team. And there are so many ties from this state to the Boise State program, from, from Hawkins, of course, who coached at Willamette, to Chris Peterson, who was on Mike Bellotti's staff. Bellotti, Peterson, and Hawkins all went to UC Davis down in Northern California, which has produced an awful lot of very good college football coaches. Oregon State back at it. And right in the air, hit by Corey Hall, who's had an active day. And he'll lose maybe a yard. A couple of Oregon Staters on that staff as well. Kent Riddle, a former starting quarterback for Oregon State. As you look at this little trap, pull to the outside. Great play there by Hall. Hall's not big at six feet, 225 but he spent an awful lot of time in the Oregon State backfield already in this one. Second down and 11. On a draw to right, this time with yardage. And this time, Wes Nurse. And Cam Hall is there to hit him as well. Hall, the nickelback, is a sophomore out of Kennewick, Washington. White Wright has a great burst of speed and is an unusually good changeup for Steven Jackson. He gets the hole a little bit quicker. He's smaller. He's tougher to see. And he's one of the three or four fastest players on this team along with Steven Jackson. So you lose nothing in speed. Third down six. Blitz coming. Anderson hit as he throws. And Newsom stopped his pattern. He and Gabe Franklin were matched up. And it's incomplete. And Boise State's defense holds again. Oregon State has to kick it away. Go to a three-man line as Boise State on third down. Brings a lot of people, that three-man front. You can send linebackers as your fourth or fifth or sixth rusher. Excellent coverage on the outside. Tim Gilligan is deep for this Carl Toby punt. Gilligan, as we told you, second in the nation, averaging 23 yards a punt return. From the 20, Gilligan makes one man miss. And he's out across the 30, a 12-yard return. And Boise State will get it first and 10 at their own 32-yard line. There's a look at Gilligan, who is such a weapon. The Broncos in the Western Athletic Conference, they made the jump from 1AA football. 
about six, seven years ago. And it's been a very successful jump at that. Look at that average. Looks like a kickoff return average, not a punt return average. Play action, Dinwiddie. Quick throw, caught there on the sidelines. And tossed out of bounds is Gilligan, and flags come down. Brandon Browner, the redshirt freshman corner, on the coverage, made the stop. Now, the officials are huddling. This is one of those tweeners where a guy is on the sideline, and it'll go as a personal foul against Oregon State. Well, it's a, you're right, it's a tweener. As a defensive back, you start to spin the guy, and you aren't really sure where you are. You could be spinning him up the field, so it's really difficult on Browner. I mean, he's way inside when he starts it right there. And he finishes it way out yeah. of bounds. So it's the proper call, but it's not an easy if you're a redshirt freshman corner. That's key right there. I think a redshirt freshman might make that mistake. He won't make it as the time goes on. There was nothing flagrant about no. it. But a big mistake for Oregon State. On the reverse, and again, the second time we've seen Lee Marks on the handoff, and Marks will get to the 43-yard line. You love the misdirection of this offense. It's how to counteract speed. If you send somebody to your one side and go back on a reverse like this, that's how you stop that great Oregon speed, particularly a linebacker, but the same speed that gets fooled comes right back and makes the play. One thing is for sure, if you're a wide receiver and you're recruited to play at Boise State, you will play. They rotate so many guys. Second down, and the throw is incomplete. This one intended for Tony McPherson, Brandon Browner on the coverage. And a third down and eight coming up for Ryan Dinwiddie and the Boise State Broncos, who, by the way, have won 13 consecutive football games. That's second in the nation to Ohio State's 18. But the Buckeyes extending that streak to 18 with a win today. Well, it didn't come easy as a one by seven over Bowling Green, and here comes the blitz, and Dinwiddie has time, and he unloads for Gilligan, and it overthrows him. Lawrence Turner on the coverage, and Gilligan peels himself off the turf here at Reeser Stadium again. I can feel the heat up here in the press box. That, that quarterback is having to throw. He does a great job staying in the pocket, looking away, too. Look at this. He sets up, now makes a move to get out of the way, but, oh, wow. Long afternoon like that, Rich. If there was a question as to whether Boise State could play with Oregon State, defensively and special teams, they've done it. Offensively, they haven't. It's a trick. It's a short snap. Boise State will hand it sort right. of a fumble right. ruski, but I don't think they'll get the first down out of it. It was. That was great. Ending up with it was Cam Hall. And I don't think he got the first down. They mark it short. Boise State, for all the trickery and all the deception, comes up a yard short. But it was fun to watch, wasn't it? I got to remember that for Thanksgiving Day games. You know that. Look at this. This is wonderful. Great fake. Oregon State right on top of it where they think the ball is. <laughs> he may have waited just a beat too long. Yeah. And that allowed Oregon State to get him. But it was worth another look. Anderson going to throw deep now for Newson. Breaks loose. Newson's got it. James Newson to the 10. Vintage James Newson. There's no play there. Derek Anderson hangs it up where he's supposed to. You give James Newson a chance. Big play. He is the prototype for the new type receiver in college football, and that's someone who is exceptionally strong in the upper body. And you saw him not only wrestle the ball away from Brown, but also jockey for position right there. Wow, look at this after the catch. This is amazing. Avalos clear back down the field, the middle linebacker, number 40. That's great effort on his part. And now on first down, and goal, Jackson breaks outside. Steven Jackson hit. Did he get in? I don't think so. They'll mark him out at the two where Chris Carr made the stop for Boise State. 
You know, Oregon State's doing something different than I've seen them of late. They're moving James Newsom in motion a lot. That's not normally something you see from him because he's the split end. He's usually on the line of scrimmage. They're putting him in motion. It's to help the running game. He's moved across. You see him right there, number two. He's moving to get in position to block because he's so physical and can block. And now a fullback in front of Jackson, and wow. bang, as he blasted at the three-yard line. Wes Nurse came up from his free safety spot. Chris Carr was there as well. Andy Avalos wasn't far behind. The junior linebacker out of Corona, California. No gain on the play. Third down goal for Oregon State. And a big play here early in this one. In the final seconds of the first quarter, the Beavers with the chance to stretch their 10-0 lead. Ewis in motion. Anderson play action. Got time. Gonna run it. Tucks it. Is he in? Stopped at the goal line. He did not get in. And it will be fourth and inches as Derek Anderson was met right at the goal line and did not get in. A tremendous play by the Bronco defense. Great effort by Derek Anderson here. He's trying to throw to the halfback in the flat. That would be Ryan Cole, the fullback in this case. Now look at Anderson. Good decision, puts all of it there. He's a big boy and a nice hit by the safety. Chris Carr, number one, you see him, he comes up from his free safety position, lays the leather to the big guy. He is big, 6'6", 226. And it looks like Oregon State is gonna go for this. The illegal formation, offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. So, an illegal motion is gonna back it up five yards. And Oregon State will get another down, so it's back to a third down and goal, but it's back to the eight yard line. So instead of fourth and inches, it's third down and eight. And instead of the first quarter, we're headed to the second quarter. Oregon State comes out quick against Boise State. And the Beavers are on the doorstep again. This a Derek Anderson to Joe Newton touchdown pass. And this is how the Beavers have their 10-0 lead. Reeser Stadium in Corvallis. Oregon State on top of Boise State. A 10-0 ball game. Oregon State with the football. Third and goal from the Boise State eight-yard line. Slot receiver, three wide, back in the game. Jackson the lone setback. Broncos show blitz, here they come. Anderson for Jackson, dropped it! Oh, he was wide open. He had six points, and usually a rather sure-handed receiver is Steven Jackson. Great adjustment by Derek Anderson right here. This is a play that's pretty well covered. Derek has a lot of pressure on him. He hangs it to the inside. Steven Jackson needs to make that catch. That is not a throw that Anderson has thrown well in his history. It's something he struggled in, so that's a good sign for Oregon State. You see the two of them on the sideline. That's what you do when you're a team, getting together, making sure that it doesn't happen again. 25 yards for Illinimi, and he hits it. And so Illinimi with the field goal stretches the lead to 13-0 Oregon State. We're just underway, second quarter. Derek Anderson, the junior quarterback, has played well in this one. Boise State's vaunted offense has yet to get on track. With the coach Mike Riley, got to be pretty happy now. He calls the offensive plays from his position on the sideline, talking to Paul Chris, his coordinator up in the box, but Mike makes every play call himself. Riley, 50 years of age. Of course, he played in college for Bear Bryant. He's a defensive back in Alabama, coached under Hugh Campbell, John Robinson. He coached at a small college in Oregon named Linfield College for a legendary coach named Ad Rutschman. It's one of the similarities that both of these coaches have. 
Riley was influenced greatly by Ad Rutschman. And Hawkins played for and coached under a guy named Jim Soker at UC Davis. Two small college legendary coaches. who had a big impact on both of these head coaches. Chris Carr at his five, and Carr high steps it out across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Let's check in with Candace Kruger. Candace? Guys, when I sat down with Coach Riley yesterday, not only did he give me his predictions on the game, he gave me his predictions on today's weather. Since his last coaching stint here in Corvallis, he's become a huge fan of the Weather Channel. Apparently, he started watching it to see if the team should practice indoors or out, and now he can't get enough of it. It's always on in his office. It was in there when I was in, in there yesterday. He says he watches it all day long. Well, the Doppler radar for this one showed no clouds, 70 degrees. David Michael on the carry to the 32-yard line. Steve Priest, what's wrong with Boise State's offense right now? Well, I think it's the, the guys in black on the other side. They're just really playing a, a very good, solid defensive game up front. They're taking away the run on first down. If you do that to a team like Boise State or anyone, it doesn't matter whether it's this offense or any other. If you get them in a long yardage on second down, you're basically winning the battle. And that's what Oregon State has done so far. On second down and eight, Dinwiddie got time, got a man, it's caught. T.J. Akery, touchdown Broncos. 67 yards. And that is the Boise State offense that we told you about. Akri the junior out of Pocatello, Idaho, was wide open. I did not see the move on the left side of the field, but it was man-to-man -man coverage. You can see that. Safety Turner deep into the middle, or even strong side, Brandon Browner, had coverage all the way. And the Broncos have their first points. Tyler Jones adds the extra point, and Boise State and Ryan Dinwiddie strike in a heartbeat. On the second play of this drive, 67 yards, T.J. Acri, and the Broncos are on the board. The Boise State offense has received its wake-up call with 14.04 left in the second quarter, and Ryan Dinwiddie, whose offense has been sluggish, suddenly explodes for a big play, and the Broncos are on the board. Jones is kicked through the end zone, and it will come out to the 20-yard line, and that's where Oregon State will start this drive. Some say Ryan Dinwiddie is one of the top pro quarterback prospects in college football. Well, it's because of his efficiency, as you look at the guy. He does not throw interceptions. He throws the ball very well, perfectly in stride right there. Good play pass, and I think that Boise State's going to have to stick with the play pass as a steady diet to slow down that pass rush. How about this for touchdown to interception ratio? 53 career touchdowns and 14 career interceptions. As Oregon State keeps it on the ground with Steven Jackson. And now the, the Beavers, who have moved the football quite well in this ball game, keep it on the ground with Steven Jackson. Any sign of the left knee that was sprained? Last week, Steve, do you see anything? Not at all. I've been watching, and he does not seem to be missing a beat. I, I don't believe in talking to Mike Riley earlier in the week that they would play him if he had any kind of a problem with this. Too valuable for the season. Anderson on second down, being chased. And it's Jackson with the catch, and he runs out of room. And down he goes at the 18-yard line. That's a big loss for Oregon State. The third down now and about 12. The Broncos are used to AstroTurf, though they play on the blue AstroTurf in Boise. Both these schools enjoy a very, very large home field advantage. And they like that turf because of the speed of their offenses. They like to be able to throw the ball deep and you need good footing to do it.
Shotgun for Anderson. With time over the middle and it's incomplete. Chris Carr on the coverage. He collided with Cole Clayson over the middle. Anderson thought maybe a flag was forthcoming. You see him talking to Cole Clayson. Cole is a young man who started two years ago at the slot position. Had a little problem academically, was not in spring ball, early camp. He's worked his way into the playing time. Today he'll play about half the time. The Beavers have three wides in the game. The dangerous Tim Gilligan now from the 34, spun around right on the sidelines. Nice coverage by Oregon State. Let's go down and check in with Candace Kruger. Candace? Rich, before the game, I talked to Coach Hawkins, and I said, you know, could you pour a better quarterback? Could you mold a better quarterback than Ryan Didwitty? And he said, you know what, Candace, I really can't. The only thing I'd give him is a few more inches in height. <laughs> well, if he could find a few more inches in height for him, send it up to the booth <laughs> for me and Steve. Dinwiddie's numbers so far today, he's had a couple of drops. 67 of those 123 in terms of yardage came on his last throw, which was a touchdown. There's that end around again. This one to Mark Onabakun, and Lawrence Turner is there to wipe him out at the 41-yard line. When you look at these plays, these reverses, it looks like there's really something there. As you watch the handoff, look, it looks like there's a play out there. And then you see people, they just materialize again because of great speed. Turner from his free safety position. He had help from Jason Lowe, the senior linebacker. Second down and 10. Dinwiddie's throw wide open there is Lawrence Beatty who makes the catch and races up the sideline and Beatty is inside the 35 down to the 33 yard line. Well there was just a crossing of the receivers kind of a scissors play. Both receivers end up on the inside player. It was a split end in that case. Then the receiver just pops to the outside. Nobody covering him. Both guys inside inside the hash marks in fact. Boy, how multiple is Boise State on offense? Nine different receivers have played in this game already. On the ground to Michael. And David Michael to the 30-yard line. Alvin Smith to stop him for, for Oregon State. Michael, the senior out of Sacramento. Big shoes to fill with Brock Forzy, who was the heart and soul of this ball club. You know, Dinwiddie certainly was the arm, but Forzy last year with his blue collar, he was a blue collar guy that made big plays. And he stuck with the Chicago Bears. Second down. Man in motion again. Dinwiddie keeps it. And he will tuck it and run and escape out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Short of the first down, bringing up third down and about five. Dinwiddie's one of the better faking quarterbacks I've seen in a long time, whether in conference or as a non-conference game. Look at that. Look at the head fake right there. He followed the guy, the fake guy around. That was the wide receiver. Made it really look like a, a true play. Nobody covers him. Excellent, excellent job by the quarterback. On third down now, blitz coming. Dinwiddie time for Gilligan, and that wasn't a good throw. Over through Gilligan. The Broncos still in field goal range, and Dinwiddie is up off the carpet. On a fourth down and four now, Tyler Jones. Bill Swancutt, the junior out of Salem. I'm sure he went and saw Dan Hawkins' teams play a few games at Willamette. When Hawkins was the coach there. So this is Jones now from 44. It would be a season long. This time a better snap and a better kick, and it's through. And the Broncos have three points to show for this drive and draw themselves within a field goal of the Pac-10's Oregon State. Don't think that the Broncos will be intimidated by walking into this stadium. They, of course, have played on the road in the SEC against Arkansas. They handled, and I mean handled, Iowa State out of the Big 12 last year in their bowl game. In their conference, 
and Oregon State fans got a taste of this two weeks ago. The Broncos have to go down at Fresno State. It was maybe Dinwiddie's coming out party two years ago, and maybe the biggest win of the program in a long time when they went into Fresno State. David Carr and Fresno State was undefeated and climbing the charts. The Broncos beat them two years ago. You can see the second longest win streak in the nation. It's been extended, the longest one, to 18 games by Ohio State. Their seven-point win over Bowling Green today. But the Broncos are not in awe playing against the team from the Pac-10. Jones with a good, strong kick. And the Beavers will not bring it out. They'll get it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Ryan Dinwiddie and the Broncos now within a, a field goal of Oregon State. Oregon State's defense has really played pretty well as you look at that scoring drive. The problems that the Beavers have had today are the same problems they had at Fresno State. Big game, big gains in the passing game. And usually late, usually just a mistake where somebody leaves someone. Later on, Mark Banker, their coordinator, calls it their eye game, what they're looking at. James Newson in motion again. Anderson, not a bad play fake from him. Going long for Haas, and it's caught. Mike Haas. Just won a wrestling match with a pretty darn good corner in Gabe Franklin. Mike Haas, a young man that's a walk-on receiver here at Oregon State, won the job in the fall camp. Beavers looking for somebody to catch the ball as you look at a nice fake on the Beaver side of the ball that time. And then look at this ball. Derek Anderson puts it up in the air. Watch Haas go up. Two guys together. Now that's a sensational catch. Court scored seven touchdowns in a high school game a few years ago in Portland's Jesuit High School. From the Boise State 39-yard line. Anderson with time. Blitz coming. And it's coming out of the hands of James Newsom. Second down and 10. Newsom doesn't drop many. Newsom working against Julius Brown. Unusual for James to, to drop a ball, as you say. Too easy, Rich. Yeah. <laughs> On second and 10. Anderson in trouble. And Ewis makes a diving, tumbling catch, but he's short of the first down. Andy Avalos there on the coverage and the stop for Boise State. Great pressure on Derek Anderson here. Looked like a defensive lineman just made a super move and got through. Derek sees the pressure coming. Watch this out of the left of your screen. There it is. Nice play, defensive line, and Derek Anderson gets rid of the ball very well. Excellent play by the quarterback. Third down three now. Dwight Wright and inside the 30, very close to the first down. Corey Hall made the initial hit. 9.45 left, first half. Oregon State jumping out to a 13-0 lead in this one. Boise State has come back to make it 13-10. And it is a first down. Derek Anderson has looked good in this ball game. Mike Riley has to be very happy with the play of his quarterback. Is this as good as he's looked all year? Oh, for sure. In fact, I thought last week was, given the circumstances, the toughest game as you could have as a high school or college quarterback or anybody. And he came back, good day today, 9 for 18, 194. He's gotten rid of the ball to the right people. Right. This time hit in the backfield to the 32-yard line. Well, last week, a fumble by Derek Anderson was returned for a touchdown. New Mexico State scored another touchdown. And Mike Riley's offense was misfiring so badly that the home crowd was actually booing the offense. And I, I talked about it earlier in the show. And I think the Beaver head coaches were very curious to see how this team would react and how that quarterback would react. And Anderson picked himself and his team up and came back to win the football game. They weren't sure how they would react and how Anderson would react when faced with adversity. And he stared it down pretty well last week. Second and 12. 
to the sidelines. A leaping catch. Newsom again. Gabe Franklin on the coverage. Short of the first down. Third down and short. Excellent route by James Newsom. He just takes it down the field. Looks like he's starting to fly. And then comes to the outside with a great cut back to the football. Nice delivery by the quarterback and excellent coverage as well. You got to run routes like that when you got cornerbacks like Boise State. They're very good. Gabe Franklin, Julius Brown, the senior corners. Third down short. Remember, Steven Jackson's not in the ball game, and Tim Ewis, the senior tight end out of Eugene, jumps. And it will cost Oregon State five yards. Dead ball, false start, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. You may ask, is this Steven Jackson absence because of the knee or something? No, uh, this is a normal MO for Oregon State. They will play Dwight Wright, usually, uh, you know, six to, to 20 plays a game. He'll get four, five, six touches a game. Third down six. Anderson stepping up. And he's got his man again. Newsom a sliding catch. And Anderson on the money. Oregon State moves the sticks. They've got a first down at the 14-yard line. The thing Derek Anderson has done better the last two weeks than at any time I've seen him in his career is moves like that. He gets himself out of trouble. He was looking left, obviously not the primary receiver to his right in James Newsom, but then got himself in a position to deliver the football. That's new. That's good for 14. They'll reset the clock to 7.47. Anderson, whose biggest struggle this year, came on the road against another WAC team in Fresno State. Jackson back in the ball game and inside the 15 down to the 11. Steven Jackson has not been nearly the dominant force in this game that he has been this season for Oregon State. But with Derek Anderson's efficiency and James Newsom over 100 yards in receiving right now, he hasn't had to be. You take what you're given, and the Beavers have done it with Derek Anderson so far today. And a nice drive now on second down and seven. And the Boise State 12. Jackson. Hit early and upended Chris Carr from his safety spot. The Boise State safeties, Wes Nurse, Chris Carr, and you've got to include Cam Hall in there as well, are all outstanding tacklers. They hit like linebackers, and you know they're put in positions with Carr at his uh, rover position. He, he's called a rover instead of a strong safety. He's actually playing like a linebacker about 90% of the time. Third down and six. Blitz is coming. Anderson is caught, and there's Cam Hall on the blitz. Corey Hall there as well, the red shirt freshman. Hall has had a wonderful game so far out of Glens Ferry, Idaho. Great call by Coach Collins there, the defensive coordinator. He put pressure on from that three-man front. I like this. It's interesting to watch the defensive linemen on third and long situations. They stand up, move around, makes it tougher for the offensive linemen to pick out their blocking assignment. Kirk Ilanimi is back in more ways than one. Ten days ago, he had an appendectomy. And today he's back, and he has drilled not one, not two, but three field goals. And Oregon State stretches their lead to six. The Beavers 16, the Broncos 10. It's turning into the game we thought it would be in Corvallis, Oregon.
the Pacific 10 Conference, the Conference of Champions. NCAA football is brought to you by Banner Bank, better ideas, better banking, and by today's manufactured homes, built for living, built for life. Rich Waltz, Steve Priest, Candace Kruger from Corvallis, home of the Oregon State Beavers, and Oregon State with a 16-10 lead over the Boise State Broncos. And David Michael will get a chance. Check it. It's Chris Carr. A car across the 35, out to the 37-yard line. And that's where Boise State will put it in play. About an hour and a half south of Portland, you'll find Corvallis, Oregon, Oregon State, and Reeser Stadium. For the 19th consecutive football game, every seat sold in this one, a sellout as the Beavers and the Broncos meet. Boise State coming off that great year last year where they finished 12th in the country. Off to a 2-0 start with the ball but trailing in the game, 16-10. Ryan Dinwiddie on play action, scrambling and looking and throwing. Gilligan is there, makes the catch. What an adjustment by both Dinwiddie and Gilligan. It's a big play for Boise State. They'll mark it at the 21-yard line. That is not as easy as it looks, folks. Well, it's exactly what happened to Oregon State at Fresno State. The quarterback makes an adjustment, takes a little bit of time. There's the play pass, but here's the secret. Dinwiddie makes the play because he gets out of trouble. Now the receiver cuts up field. The defensive back has him covered, turns to look at the quarterback, and a great adjustment by the receiver. On first and 10, David Michael caught and drops. Brandon Scales, a redshirt freshman, made the stop for Oregon State. Chris Peterson is the offensive coordinator for Boise State and deserves Brandon an awful lot of credit for Ryan Dinwiddie's success. Peterson was an All-American quarterback at UC Davis. He worked on Mike Bellotti's staff at Oregon as a receivers coach. For the last three years, he's been a constant companion of Ryan Dinwiddie. Gilligan in motion. Gilligan will get it. Gilligan hands it back. It's Acre who will throw it, and it's incomplete. T.J. Acre threw the pass that Donnie Heck did not come down with. And we've seen just a little bit of everything from Boise State. Absolutely. This is a nice play again. The fakes by everyone, including, look at Dinwiddie. He's going to block. Ball thrown. The Beavers were actually in relatively good position there. Mitch Musin, number five, makes the play on it. Let's see if the Beavers can toughen up like their opponent has. Boise State's been incredible in the red zone so far on defense. Can Oregon State? Third down seven. Here comes the blitz. Dinwiddie's got time. And a man, Gilligan, the catch, escapes out of bounds. I think he's got the first down. He was right on the sticks. Nice play by Dinwiddie. He absolutely got to the sticks exactly where he's supposed to. First down, Boise State. Tim Gilligan, the senior out of Elko, Nevada, was not a starter last year, was sort of the utility wide receiver, did a little bit of everything. Great punt returner, great kick returner, and having a decent day as a receiver as well. Donnie Heck, Boise State keeps it on the ground. Heck down to the eight yard line. I do not believe I've seen two of the same sets in a row in this entire game from Boise State. <laughs> Which made a long week for Mark Banker, the <laughs> defensive coordinator for Oregon State. And like I said, it doesn't get any easier next week. A very similar offense. Dan Hawkins' protege, the guy that, that helped groom Hawkins for the job, is Dirk Cutter. It's Arizona State who's in here next week. This is Ryan Dinwiddie, shovel pass, nicely done, as they keep it on the ground to the four-yard line. Legadu Nane, 
on the carry. First time he's touched the football. Well, again, Dinwiddie's effort is unbelievable. He looks away, looks like he's going to throw the pass, sets the shovel pass up extremely well, and it, it really is just good linebacker play that keeps that from being a score. Third down. Dinwiddie in trouble and swallowed up at the six. And for all the misdirection and all the wrinkles that Boise State has shown, that one didn't go as planned. Well, I think one thing is clear, you don't want to do anything without misdirection. <laughs> It is fourth down and it. goal, and Boise State will go for it. On fourth and goal, Michael in motion. Little play action, Dinwiddie's throw, caught by Heck. He's hit at the four and knocked out by Eric Williams. And Oregon State holds. Boise State has nothing to show for that drive. And the Beavers get the ball back at their own four-yard line. Nice play call. There's the fake again to the inside. Tried to run the, the original fake from the fullback out into the flat. Nice job by the cornerback. Beavers playing what looked like just five across. See those defensive backs and linebackers? They just line up across the goal line. Nobody's covered man-to-man. -man. It's just their zone. Eric Williams starting his first year for Oregon State. Steven Jackson on the carry. Jackson stumbles and falls Jackson at the, the nine-yard line. You can see the clock at the top of your screen with two and a half minutes left. Oregon State with the ball and a six-point lead headed towards halftime here in the first half. Boise State has two timeouts left, and they might burn one if Oregon State does not pick up a first down on this snap of the ball. <laughs> Movement and flags. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Boise State was back in their run-stop defense, their base 4-4. Forcing the Beavers to throw the football, really, in this situation. Now let's see what Boise State does to counteract the, the additional five yards. Second down nine. Jackson again. Out to the 10. Third down and about five. And Boise State will indeed burn a timeout with a minute 41 left in this first half. And we'll step aside as well. Oregon State with the ball and the lead. A minute 41 left, first half. We're back to Corvallis after this. Oregon State, a six-point lead, headed towards half with a minute 41 left in this first half. When we arrive at halftime, Rich Walt, Steve Priest, we will have some first half highlights. We'll have some scores from across the nation. We'll talk with both Mike Riley and Coach Hawkins of Boise State. And Bob DeCarolis, the athletic director of Oregon State, will stop by and inform us exactly what a school has to go through to enlarge their stadium as Oregon State is in the process of doing. Anderson on third down, rolling and throwing, and it's incomplete. And that plays right into Boise State's hands because the incompletion stops the clock only four seconds escaped from the game clock on that play. And now Boise State, who seemingly gambled on fourth and goal from the five, will get the football back. And remember, they've got Tim Gilligan, one of the nation's best punt returners. 720 days, the Beaver Nation will expand. Next year, they'll start a lot of the work to be completed in two seasons. And here's Gilligan, a great punt. Gilligan at his own 39, starts back, Gilligan up the middle, look at him go, he's 40, he's 30, Gilligan to the 20, he's 10, touchdown Boise State, Tim Gilligan. And something 
called out kicking your coverage and that's exactly what that punt did the kick was so good the cover was too far away and gave him a running head start great run there great blocking 61 yards on the return and the broncos can have the lead for the very first time if they can make this extra point Tyler Jones. As good as advertised is Tim Gilligan. Watch this. See the that's what we call by out kicking your coverage. The Beavers were too far away to break down on the guy. Just an excellent job. Well, he's got moves. He's, he moves around really well. You'll remember, if you're a fan of college football, as we watched Gilligan finish the deal, two years ago, when Boise State was down at Fresno State, Gilligan on a punt return was hit early and suffered a, a shot to the jaw, left the ball game. Kendall Edwards was the Fresno State player. Edwards, earlier in the season, had hit an Oregon State player, Terrell Roberts, and knocked him out of the ball game as well. And both Boise State and Oregon State lost their punt returners for those ball games. And that was the impetus two years ago for the much stronger halo rule, which this year has been changed. I can see why he has a 23-yard average. <laughs> it's been pretty impressive. It just went up with that 61-yard return. Beavers will bring it out. Brandon Cantonese across the 20 to the 21 yard line. There's still a minute 14 left. Boise State has one timeout. Oregon State with two timeouts. As we're under a minute and a half left in this first half. Tim Gilligan, Elko, Nevada. The Broncos have players from all over, not just the Northwest, but down through Nevada and California. Great clock management last time by Boise State. And really, they're in the same position. You hold Oregon State with a couple of incompletions right here. Use that timeout you've got. you got the same situation. On a draw at Steven Jackson. And Jackson breaks to the 30. Jackson across to the 32-yard line. He's right at the six. Gain of 10. Gabe Franklin made the stop. 11-yard gain and an OSU first down. Boise team only gives up 30 yards a game on the ground. Play great run defense. They certainly have today, particularly down in the red zone. Steve, first and 10 now, their own 31-yard line. Is Oregon State going to put it up? I believe they will. I, I think they'll go for it, try to get something back. they got a great field goal kicker. They're going for Newsom, and why not? He makes the catch at the 27. Oregon State's coaches have worked with Derek Anderson so much the last couple of weeks to just put the ball up in the air, let Newsom and Hass and these guys go for it. And it's amazing when number two has a chance to pick up the ball. Look at the protection here from the Beavers. No pressure at all on Derek Anderson. He lays that ball high up in the air. And the Beavers are in a position to actually have a field goal attempt at least. Shotgun on first and 10. Anderson going for it all, and it's incomplete. Mike Pass, the intended receiver, he was bumped at the goal line. The pass, though, was high. Now you wonder about a strong arm. He overthrew that ball a little bit, but that was just absolutely on a line for about 40 yards. Forty-eight seconds left. Remember, Oregon State has a pair of timeouts on second and ten. On the Boise State 27, Anderson flushed. Anderson hit. Anderson dropped at the 26-yard line. Mike Williams, a freshman out of Lethbridge, Alberta. A Canadian up front for Boise State. And Oregon State is going to burn a timeout as the Broncos got to the quarterback. 
Athletic move there by Williams. He comes from the outside, spins around, gets inside. Nice play. Backup quarterbacks talking to the coach. They're the two gentlemen, Adam Rothenflew, 12, Ryan Gunderson, 10. They signal in the plays from Coach Riley to Derek Anderson normally. Not going to do it this play. He's getting the instructions right from and, Mike and, Riley's mouth. And the man on the right in the white shirt with the sunglasses is a very important part, not only of Oregon State's history, but Oregon State's present. That's Jonathan Smith, who was the quarterback, of course, and Dennis Erickson was here. Mike Riley had a hand in recruiting him. He's kept him on as a student assistant. He's now sort of the quarterback confidant on the sidelines because when Derek Anderson comes off the sideline, Smith is the guy that counsels him, that talks him through. He's the guy that interprets everything from Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator. I think it's interesting to note that he's been down for two weeks, and Derek has probably done more things from an improvement standpoint the last two weeks than he had in the, the two weeks before. Third down, nine. Shotgun for Anderson. Boise shows blitz, and here they come. Anderson's got time, and he overthrows Hass. And the pass is incomplete. You can see the, res the official on the left signaling uncatchable ball, which is an indication that the officials thought there was contact on the sideline. But the pass again was high. Boise State putting good pressure out of that three-man line with all the stand-up linemen. Oregon State's offensive linemen have a little bit of problem picking out who they pick up in their zone schemes. Kirk Illanimi now for his fourth field goal attempt. This one from 43 yards. And Illanimi missed it. He has made three on the day. 20 in a row, that's the Oregon State record and that'll end it right there. And he misses, ending his streak. And so Oregon State now will head to the locker room seemingly with 32 seconds left, down by a point. The Broncos of Boise State with the ball and a one point lead. And let's see what Dan Hawkins and Chris Peterson will do. Probably will keep it on the ground. Dinwiddie on first and 10. Michael. And Michael pinballs his way out to the 34-yard line. Richard Siegler made the stop. Michael, the second ground gainer in the country behind Michigan's Chris Perry. 167 yards per game. Not a real productive first half for him. Seven carries, 23 yards. Sellout crowd at Reacher Stadium now. We'll watch the visiting Boise State Broncos, who have never defeated a Pac-10 team. 0-8 in their history. They will head to the locker room on the road in Corvallis with a one-point lead. The Broncos a 17-16 halftime lead. Oregon State had a 13-0 lead at one point in the first half, but the Broncos have come storming back on two big plays. Tim Gilligan's 62-yard punt return for a touchdown, and of course, the Ryan Dinwiddie to TJ Akery throw of 67 yards. It's a big play bunch from Boise, and boy did they show it in the first half. Let's head down below Candace Kruger. Coach, you guys started off with the moment, momentum, scored on the first two drives of the game. It really seems to have shifted. How do you regain that in the second half? Well, we've got to come out and just establish something, I think, in the running game, because they're stopping our run pretty good. We've hit some big passes and got some yards, but we haven't capitalized down in the red zone, and part of it is we're not running the ball effectively. Well, speaking of the running game, yesterday we spoke a lot about Boise State's explosive yeah. running game, but they're doing well in the air. How do you, what changes do you make in the secondary? Well, we've just got to be sound. We've given up two major plays, punt return for a touchdown, and of course the long, long pass. So those are the kinds of things you have to eliminate, make them earn it a little better than that. Okay, thanks coach, good luck to you. 
Brett. All right, thank you, Candace. Mike Riley headed to the locker room, down by a point at home to Boise State. Tim Gilligan and the Broncos of Boise State opening some eyes in the Pac-10. The Broncos have a one-point halftime lead. Welcome to Oregon State University, home of great minds and the heart of Beaver Nation. In the Conference of Champions, we always have a hometown advantage. This message furnished by Oregon State University. And the Boise State Broncos out of the Western Athletic Conference have a one-point lead over the Oregon State Beavers. Welcome back. Rich Waltz along with Steve Priest. Two very different, uh, I guess, quarters. The first quarter dominated by Oregon. The second quarter dominated by the big plays of the Boise State Broncos. Well, without a doubt. And I think they've confused Oregon State a bit. I think the formation moves, I think the personnel changes, confused a few people and they've blown some coverages. Yeah, well let's look at the first quarter and some of the highlights and some of the uh, the pictures that'll show us Oregon State's dominance. The Beavers got off to a quick start and Derek Anderson looked very comfortable. Well, I like the call really. Derek looked good. The, the uh, offensive play was just correct. You go vertical against an eight-man front, basically. Yeah, that touchdown to Joe Newton was a big one. And then Boise State went up and went deep. Ryan Dinley did a T.J. Acre. Well, and this is what's happened. The, the formation changes the motion. Confused Oregon State. In that case, they're completely blown coverage. And then here you just see a great, great return by Gilligan. This Tim, is yeah. Tim Gilligan, second of the nation in punt returning. He'll probably be first by the time this return was done. 62 yards on the return. And Boise State had their very first lead of the football game. And remember, the Broncos had a fourth down and goal from the five that they went for and didn't get. Look at the offense that we've seen already <laughs> and the passing yards in this one. 321 yards by Oregon State. Mike Riley's got to be happy about that, I would expect. Well, I think so. I think if you ask Mike Riley right now what's wrong with anything offensively, it'd be red zone. The Beavers have marched up and down the field but haven't scored. They've had three field goals that they've made and one more that they should have made, possibly. He might also say that uh, Steven Jackson needs to be a presence. Maybe he hinted at that when he was talking with Candace. I think we'll see that. You know, Mike Riley believes the most important part of the football game is the two minutes before half and after the half. Let's see what happens to two half. Well, the first two minutes of the game, it was all Oregon State. The last two minutes of the half, it was all Boise State. It's halftime in a one-point game with Boise State on top of Oregon State. A gorgeous fall night in Oregon. Corvallis, Boise State has a 17-16 lead over Oregon State. Research Stadium for the 19th consecutive time, sold out, capacity just over 35,000. Two more sellouts coming up, and they'll probably sell out the rest of the season. Quite an accomplishment for this school and this program. Bob DeCarolis, the athletic director of Oregon State, joins us. You have to be pretty proud of those numbers. Very proud, very, very proud of our fan base, our students, our alums and donors that have been able to get that record going. All right. Well, you're going to have to stretch a little to get the record in a couple years because you're stretching this stadium. 35,000 right now. Expansion will get it close to 50,000. Tell me exactly what college football fans will see when they walk in this place in two years. Well, the first phase is on the east side of the stadium where our home, uh, home bench is right now. Should add another 8,000 seats to that. Uh, there'll be a double deck uh, part of the stadium. We'll have the students along the sideline from goal line to goal line on metal bleachers. So they'll be creating some noise. And then the, that second uh, second deck will create a lot of noise, too, because you'll be about 135 feet from the from the field. So it'll be a, it'll be a pretty noisy, noisy atmosphere. This program's come a long way from six, seven years ago when you had trouble giving tickets away and getting people here. Mike Riley got it started. Dennis Erickson uh, took you to a BCS Bowl game. Um, keeping up with the Joneses, not necessarily in the Pac-10, but also nationally, is obviously something very important. You feel that this expansion is part of that? Well, it's not so much keeping up with the Joneses. I mean, if you're going to have a broad-based program in Division 1A, you have to have the revenue sources to uh, support that. 
and quite honestly, uh, football and men's basketball are really the two sources to do that. So you want to invest in those programs and keep those programs healthy. And with 85 scholarships in, uh, in Division One football, you can stay competitive. Boise State's a great example of that. 17-16, Boise State on top of Oregon State. As we get ready for the second half, Dan Hawkins, the head coach of the Boise State Broncos, has to be happy, and he's with our Candace Kruger. Thanks, guys. Now, Coach, you've had some explosive plays in the air in the first half. What do you do to continue the momentum and continue the consistency in the second half? Well, our defense has played great. We gave up one touchdown on a blown coverage, and they've done a nice job. We missed a couple of scoring opportunities on offense. I think we're starting to see some receivers, you know, come around and make some plays. We still got to generate some more running game, though. But defensively, your guys are giving up more points than they're, than they're accustomed to. What do you do to stop Derek Anderson? Well, you know, we got to keep packing the box, you know, and just making it tough on that guy, you know. And then, obviously, they've been nuisance and having a big day, too. So, it just came a cat and mouse right now. Absolutely. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. All right. Thank you, Candace. Dan Hawkins has to be pretty happy with Ryan Dinwiddie. It, it wasn't a Dinwiddie first quarter. It was a slow start. What got him on track, Steve Priest? Well, I think the formations and the confusion. I think he's gotten something out of those continual fakes. As you see there, a nice job of play faking by Dinwiddie. Buys a little bit of time, and, and the cornerback loses the receiver because of those formation changes and play fakes. Excellent job by Dinwiddie in the first half. It is Oregon State who gets the first possession of the second half. You can see the Dinwiddie numbers. 11 of 21, no interceptions. Dinwiddie on the season has yet to throw a pick. He threw only three last year. It's remarkable where he puts the ball when it's an incompletion. It is never close to an interception. He knows exactly where to deliver the ball and his accuracy is unbelievable. Tyler Jones with the kick. And it, it's fumbled in the end zone. It'll be a touchback. A scary moment for Brandon Cantonese as it almost bounced off of Cantonese and rolled back out across the goal line. And now Oregon State will put it back in play. Derek Anderson, Steven Jackson, and James Newson were the features of the first half. You heard. Coach Hawkins, Dan Hawkins, talk about the first half and the way his defense has played. You agree? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, for giving up 321 yards, what they've done is they've never broken. The bend but not break theory has been in. They've been tough in that red zone and stopped the Beavers when it was necessary. And this is Jackson, and he's hit by Chris Carr. And a gain of three. I've been impressed with the way they've contained Jackson. No big runs. Jackson, who is a big pounding back with blazing speed, sort of a, a Ricky Williams type or an Edger and James. As physical as he is, he's normally good for two or three big long runs a game. Well, they've continued to bring a lot of people in the box. And I, I'm particularly impressed as you look at the statistics with the 3-5 the formation that they're running on defense at Boise State. Jackson again and again. Not a big gain. Out to the 27-yard line. This is the situation and longer yardage where Boise State has been taking their stand-up defensive linemen, moving them around right up till the time of the snap and confusing Oregon State's blocking schemes. Not here, however. Jackson, the lone running back. Anderson's going to throw. Got time. Lobs it up for Ewis, and it's incomplete. Flags come down. He was double covered in the secondary. West Nurse on the coverage. Joe Newton, the intended receiver, the big red shirt freshman tight end. That's a play that Oregon State scored on in the first half. Pass interference, defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. That particular time, if you look at Steven Jackson, if you could see him here as you watch Derek throw really into coverage, Steven Jackson takes the fake, circles left, wide open. Good call.
Cam Hall, the nickelback. First and 10, Oregon State, they're on 43. Jackson again. This time he breaks loose, and this time he's got 10 yards. Finally brought down by Travis Berger. Rich, earlier this week, they were asking the players the difference between Steven Jackson, as you watch him here, and, and Dwight Wright. And one of the quotes is from tight end Tim Ewis. He says, when Steven plays, he brings his own blocker. <laughs> Himself. <laughs> you got it. 6'3", 233. About halfway to his average day. Jackson, right side. Mike Riley on his way out after the first half told our Candace Kruger that he had to get Steven Jackson involved in this football game. And the Beavers certainly have made him a focal point of this opening drive of the second half. Take a look here again. Just patient, patient, patient. Nice block by Ewis, as you mentioned earlier. Jackson to the 42-yard line. Steven Jackson certainly is touted as one of the better running backs in the country. When we ask Mike Riley, who does he remind you of? Obviously, with Ricky Williams and Edger and James, people have made that comparison. Riley said he reminds me of a guy that we drafted in San Diego when he was a Chargers coach, and that's Ladanian Tomlinson. Really, the pass offense here at Oregon State for Steven Jackson is the same thing as what they had in, in uh, San Diego for Tomlinson. Jackson cuts in, and he's hit at the 38-yard line and dropped there. Dave Oldham, the junior, made the stop. The other thing that Riley told us, and we asked him, what do you know about Jackson that the rest of the country doesn't know? And he said, I'll tell you what, he's one of the smartest football players he's ever been around. And you don't hear that said about a running back very often. This drive has been all Steven Jackson, Anderson. Got time, Ewis has the catch. Ewis to the 10, drop the ball. It's loose, Boise State has it. Chris Carr with the ball. The Broncos have recovered and Carr is out to the 30 yard line. A big play on defense after a throw and catch that brought the ball down inside the 10. Tim Ewis stripped of the ball and Chris Carr, the junior safety out of Reno picked it up. Nice job again by Derek Anderson finding it. Now, Tim Ewis has just got to tuck that ball. Oh, what a great play right there by Hall. He knocks that ball loose with his right club, and that's it. Great play by the linebacker. Corey Hall made the strip. Chris Carr picked it up, and Ryan Dinwiddie gets his first touch of the second half. Acre in motion. Play action for Dinwiddie. Got time. Sideline caught there. It's Acre right at the sticks. Gain of 10. First and 10, Boise State. Eric Williams on the coverage. And it is amazing how quickly a game can turn in college football. Well, momentum completely shifted back. And I go back again to the importance of just before and just after the half. Oregon State gives up a big special teams play just before it, then misses a field goal. Now they come back, have a chance to to score points and give it up. On first and 10, incomplete. Dinwiddie looking for Trent Lundeen. Second down and 10. Under pressure, he delivers the ball exactly where it's supposed to go. It's amazing, outside the reach of the defender and the receiver when there's any question. Second down, 10. Dinwiddie got time. Gilligan in the sunshine makes the catch. The 46-yard line, Brandon Browner on the coverage. Tim Gilligan does a little bit of everything for this football mm -hmm. team. He does it well. The timing up between Dinwiddie and Gilligan is absolutely sensational. All 
all the big guys in. It looks like three tight ends, at least two. And third down and five. Lundin in motion. And flags come down. Ball start, offense. Five yard penalty, remains third down. If you have an offense that turns the ball over, you better have a defense that prevents scoring after those turnovers. And in four games, the Beavers' 10 turnovers have cost them only three points. And Oregon State has not won the turnover battle this year at all. Third down, 10. Dinwiddie in trouble. Dinwiddie scrambling, and he's caught and dropped. After scrambling for a yard, he ended up in the arms of Jonathan Pollard, the junior out of Las Vegas. And Boise State will have to punt. Dinwiddie's checking his receivers. Nothing there. And look at the moves here. Just really a nice job. Nice job of tackling, too, by 40 Pollard. Kyle Stringer now to punt for the Broncos. It's a low snap. Stringer's in trouble. And down he goes. Oregon State gets the ball back at the Boise State 28-yard line. This week, Dan Hawkins said, so far, everything has gone well with a true freshman punter. Knock on wood. Until that snap and that play. Well, it was a bad snap. It certainly wasn't the true freshman punter. The ball was on the ground to the left. Right back to work now, Oregon State. And Steven Jackson. Flag goes down. Jackson's inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. We hadn't seen a penalty for a heck of a long time. Holding with this. offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. If you take a look, we've seen a lot of uh, three explosion positions in this half. Penalties, fumbles, a bad snap. So it's first and 20 now. Anderson pumping, going deep for Haas. And it's broken up, flags down, interference. Julius Brown and Chris Carr on the coverage of Mike Haas. They continue to say that Mike Haas doesn't have the speed to get deep. Yet he seems to do it with footwork. Nice out and up here. Pass interference, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Young Mr. Haas right there. He does get behind the cornerback. Brown has to chop step a little bit to keep from running directly into him. And that costs him. Boy, I don't know. It seemed like the ball hit Carr before he hit Haas. Actually, I think it was before that. Okay. I think it was before. He, he was pulling his hands back after the initial hit would have. Gotcha. On first and 10 now. It's a 15-yard penalty, and Steven Jackson has hit at the 19, driven to the 20. Andy Avalos made the stop. How has Boise State done what a lot of teams have been unable to do? That's not necessarily stop him, but, it, but at least keep Steven Jackson from dominating this football game. Well, they put people up on the line of scrimmage in a position to tackle, but then they've done it with heart. I mean, they are just bringing 
I don't care whether it's one guy to eight guys, but they are coming full speed, and nobody's taking any back seat to anybody. They're in here to win, and they're hustling all over the field. Jackson again, he's hit early, bounces outside. Chris Carr runs him down at the 20 yard line. And there's the heart and there's the hustle that you talked about. They just keep coming, this Boise State team does. And hey, we're inside of the red zone again, watching Oregon State uh, with the football and, and they're losing, they're going backwards right here. Brad Allen, the sophomore safety out of Eagle, Idaho, made the initial penetration and it was Carr along with Brown, who finally caught up to Jackson. Third down, seven. Anderson, lots of time, end zone, incomplete, past the intended receiver, there was contact, but I'm not sure it was a catchable ball. I don't think it was catchable. There was contact, but the official was right on and actually started to raise his hand as though he were going to give the signal for a not catchable ball. Another look. Excellent protection right here. Derek Anderson has all the time in the world. Puts it up where the only guy who has a chance is Mike Haas. Kirk Ilanimi again. His fifth opportunity. He's hit three of four. This from 37 yards, and he hits it. And Oregon State reclaims the lead. Four Ilanimi field goals. With 7.45 left in the third quarter from Corvallis, the Beavers are back on top. Oregon State leads Boise State. Mike Riley and Oregon State on top, 1917. Midway through this third quarter, David Michael from his goal line. Stopped at the 12-yard line. Special teams work for Oregon State. Joe Lemma, Jamal Jackson on the special teams coverage. And now Boise State's offense goes back to work. I think that's the first time David Michaels actually had the ball on a kickoff today. Crowd making some noise. Michael on the cut on the uh, carry going nowhere. Dwan Edwards and Trent Bray on the stop for Oregon State. This sellout crowd has not been a factor in this football game yet. Dan Hawkins preached all week to his Boise State team. Let's enjoy this. Let's enjoy going into a Pac-10 stadium in front of a, a sellout crowd. The Broncos always get great support and loud support in their stadium in Boise. This is as loud as the crowd has been all day. Dinwiddie. The flag goes down as Gilligan was held as he made his break. He was locked up with Eric Williams. There's a look at Williams, the junior corner out of Los Angeles. This little scissor play that has continued to be run out of this tandem receiver formation has worked almost every time they've, they've thrown it. To look at Williams. It's, a, it's not a hold nor an interference, but a personal foul and a face mask. I think Williams just sees the turn and, and actually grabs whatever he can grab because the receiver takes off upfield. field. Gilligan that, makes a smart play. Yeah, and obviously it happened well before we got there. And so the 27-yard line. is where Boise State will get it on first and 10. Play action to Gilligan. Second man through Donnie Heck, and Heck is out to the 35-yard line before Mitch Mewson makes the stop for Oregon State. 
They'll mark it at the 34-yard line. Second down and a long three. The counter play right there, excellent call. We haven't seen Heck run that play before in the game. Again, the confusion with the Beavers as they see reverse or fake reverse again. Little pitch, Heck tripped up. Great play on the corner by Brandon Browner. Brandon's a big physical corner, redshirt freshman, but a very strong body, 6'4", 195. Academic problems kept him on the shelf last week, and it wasn't like he was able to practice with the team as well. No practice, no food, no anything with the team. He was completely off the team for about 10 days. Came back, crashed course, and starting and playing a real good football game. Now he got to eat, he just didn't get to eat <laughs> with the team. <laughs> That's probably the clue. <laughs> On third down, blitz coming. Dinwiddie stepping up and throwing on the run. It's caught at the 45-yard line. A tremendous catch tumbling out of bounds as Lee Marks. Dinwiddie again. Eight different Boise State receivers have caught passes in this game. Well, this is just a great job. He, he finds time, finds a receiver, makes the correct throw, knows where he is on the field. That's another thing. He was approaching the, the uh, line of scrimmage and knew exactly what to do. David Michael on the carry across the 45 to the 47, a gain of three. Dan Rothwell made the stop. The Broncos came in averaging 261 yards per game on the ground. Chris Peterson and Dan Hawkins didn't think they would get that in this game against a very good Oregon State defense. They have done it mostly through the air. Dinwiddie got time and just overthrows his man. It's incomplete. He was looking for Lawrence Beatty. Nice coverage, but again, the pass is exactly where it's supposed to be. Here's Brian, or Brandon Browner. Third down, seven. Four receivers, blitz on the way, Dinwiddie time. And he overthrows Gilligan, and it's almost intercepted. Lawrence Turner almost came up with a pick. Eric Williams on the coverage. And the Broncos will have to punt. Remember, they faked a punt earlier in the game. Nice effort by Williams. He just about makes the pick. and Would have been a big time play, but you got to have those game plays. Stringer gets the punt off. And what a gorgeous punt it is as it takes a right turn at the one-yard line. That is a 53-yard coffin corner kick. There's a flag down at the 25-yard line. How about that? Kyle Stringer, a true freshman out of Texas, won the punting job. He kicked under pressure that time, too. Oregon State had some people coming. Tough kick. There are two dead ball fouls on the play. Dead ball, face mask on Oregon State. Dead ball, personal foul on Boise State. Penalties canceled. First down. So the penalties cancel. The impressive punt stands. It sits inside the one-yard line. Let's see if we see. Oh, there, there it is. <laughs> There's the wrestling match. That would be a face mask and a personal foul. And this would be a timeout. 4.46 left, third quarter. Oregon State on top of Boise State by two. Bill Swanka, defensive lineman for Oregon State. Our banner bank building to the future, a 3.24 grade point average, and also the leader on that defensive line with three and a half sacks this season. Oregon State's defense on the bench getting a rest. Oregon State's offense 
is up against it, and I mean up against it. The ball is marked inside the one. Derek Anderson operating in his own end zone. And the first man through, Ryan Cole, maybe with a yard. This coming off the punt by the true freshman, Kyle Stringer. A 52-yard punt that went out inside the one. Got a little more yardage than I thought right there. He, he brought it out, it looked like almost two yards. From their own three, Anderson's gonna throw. He stumbles in the end zone and then gets it off to Newson who makes the catch and has the first down. At the 12 yard line, Chris Carr on the coverage and a flag goes down. Newson right now and the official barking at each other and this looks like it's going against Oregon State. And both Newson and Jackson have to be very careful right now. Well you got to keep your head. James Newson's a senior. He knows this. And the personal foul goes against Oregon State. This is a well-conceived play down here. Stumbled by Derek Anderson, keeps his feet, throws the ball on, on line. Now he's matched up with Chris Carr, and the flag came after the whistle, so let's watch it. Now the whistle's already blown, and here's what James Newsom's getting at a little about. I, <laughs> I didn't see anything there, Rich. Well, as Newsom ripped the, or at least tried to rip the ball away from Carr, I didn't see much either. Yeah. And you, you can hardly blame a guy like Newsom when he's got three guys on him. Yeah. The crowd over there and the Oregon State bench are arguing as aggressively as they can. Well, I'm sure they're making the argument that the play was long dead. You know, it, it's not going to cost the Beavers much at all. in terms of yardage. It's still a first down, and in penalty yardage, half the distance to the goal, it's only about five yards. Let's, let's take a look from this angle. The, heard the whistle. Oh, I think he threw a punch. Looked like maybe a late swing there. I don't know if he connected. Jackson on the carry to the 11. Certainly it woke the crowd up. <laughs> well, this defense is so tenacious, and they're in this. They got a chance to win this football game at Boise State, and they're going for it. Second down, six. Oregon State with the lead and the ball at their own 12. Three and a half minutes left, third quarter. Anderson to throw. Lots of time. Lobs it out for Newson and it's incomplete. Gabe Franklin on the coverage. With help coming from Cam Hall, the nickelback. What a day it's been for James Newson. Seven catches, 156 yards. Hall made a great play there from his safety position. He came clear over, cut Newson off from the ball at the end. That's the good news. The bad news is Oregon State has only one other catch from a wide receiver. Third down. Anderson's throw. It's Newsom again, and he's hit and dropped right away by Julius Brown. He is close to the first down. They mark it short about a yard. Well, the Beavers are going to have to punt. There's no way they're going to take a fourth down and run it down here. The last time Oregon State punted from this end of the field, in this field position, Tim Gilligan brought it back 62 yards for a touchdown. Uh, 
And I would think that Mike Riley told this man, Carl Toby, don't kick it to Tim Gilligan. That's Tim not Gilligan an easy thing to do Broncos. when you're trying to root it deep and get it out of your own territory. There's Gilligan waiting. Play clock ran down. And they're going to have to kick it again. Delay of game will cost them five. Has the punting game been a factor today? Wow. Fumble by Boise State. Touchdown by Boise State. That 51-yard punt that went out inside the one. Huge. And now Toby. This is a low-line drive. But you know what? The alternative is giving Gilligan a chance to bring it back. And so the ball is at the 45-yard line of Oregon State. Boise State return. will get it when we get back. Two and a half minutes left. Third quarter, Oregon State by two. David Michael on a third down carry inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. Jason Jean Baptiste made the stop. And Boise State now with three straight running plays has it inside the Oregon State 40 but is short of the first down and now is faced with an interesting call. At fourth down and about three, Dan Hawkins, the Bronco head coach, went for it on fourth and goal from the five in the first half and didn't make it. And Ryan Dinwiddie is going to call a timeout and talk it over. Well, they're in an unusual position right here. You're almost too, you're too far to kick the field goal and too close to punt the ball. Yep. The Broncos have been winning the field position battle in this half. They did a nice job special teams and defensively on that last Oregon State possession. And with that fresh in Hawkins' mind. Well, he's got the right guy in, in tow right there. He's talking to his senior quarterback, asking him exactly what he sees as a play. Let's check in down below with our Candace Kruger. Well, Rich, Coach Hawkins says he believes team building is crucial. He encourages his guys to spend some time together off the field. He says they go float the river, they go to the movies. And I definitely think you can see that, see that in the camaraderie with the guys on the field. Yeah, it's certainly something he's tried to foster in his time. He said Dirk Cutter was a, a big proponent of that when he was at, at Boise State. Hawkins has continued that. He said the coaches don't float the river with the team, however. Because Hawkins figures if the coaches were to go, the coaches would spend most of the time getting thrown in the river. <laughs> so it's players only when they float the river in well. Boise. Coach Hawkins also said when he got the WAC Coach of the Year last year that it was not his award. It was team only. Says a lot about the coach. Remember, this is a team that's won 13 consecutive football games, second longest streak in the nation. Hawkins had a great run at Willamette and has had a, obviously, in his two plus years, great success, eight and four his first year. 12-1 last year with an 8-0 WAC championship. And after the timeout, the Broncos will go for it. And a loud crowd here in Corvallis comes to their feet. Fourth and three. Dinwiddie, time. It's deflected and incomplete. It was intended for Tony McPherson. Oregon State holds, and the Beavers get the football with great field position. This is a great little play. He has a triple tandem over to the right side of the formation. All the receivers, tight end, two receivers, crisscross. He picks out the right guy. You'll see him coming across the face. Jonathan Pollard, number 40, just does a super job as a linebacker, finding the right guy and staying with it. Oregon State picked it up, and again, their defense comes through. That was one of the few bad throws we've seen from Dinwiddie today. And now Oregon State with breathing room at their own 38. Anderson to put it up. And his throw is on the money and dropped by Mike Hass. Mm -hmm. 
drop, but excellent coverage again. Cornerback right in the receiver's face. 300 yards, a pretty good day. Second down and 10. Jackson, and again he is caught. What a play there by Brad Allen. Did you see Allen, the sophomore safety, sneak in? He's only 5'7", 180 pounds. Steven Jackson, 6'3", and 233. You bet he tackled him by the shoe tops. Well, he plays that rover position. That's like a strong safety up on the line of scrimmage, really like a linebacker. If you look at Brad right there. Three quarters in the books. Eric Anderson, Oregon State. Headed towards the fourth quarter, but with a slender two-point lead. Boise State is in town. 15 minutes left, and the Beavers lead by two. 19th consecutive sellout at Reeser Stadium in Corvallis. On to the fourth quarter, Oregon State, a two-point lead over Boise State. Rich Walt, Steve Priest, Candace Kruger. Third down, Oregon State from their own 40. Time for Anderson. Man, it's Newsom. He breaks loose. He's 20. He lost the ball, and it's out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 12-yard line. First down, Oregon State. James Newsom approaching 200 yards and receiving. Well, that was a big throw and big catch. The Beavers were only three for 14, third down until then. And Derek Anderson looks off to his right, stands in the pocket, great protection, just no pressure, and puts the ball absolutely on the money. The rest is vintage James Newsom. That's a nice job by Brad Allen to punch the ball. Fortunately for Oregon State, he was along the sideline. Beavers can get a first down. They mark it outside the 10. Jackson, five. Jackson, touchdown, Oregon State. Steven Jackson didn't take the jump up into the stands. I guess he would have had to jump down into those stands. Nice run, nice blocking. Actually a good call. The Beavers have been throwing the ball on first down. They're going to draw right here. And look at the blocking up front. Brock, the center, great standoff. Canan Sanchez, right guard, makes a beautiful block on the outside linebacker. Extra point good. Oregon State stretches their lead to nine. And Steven Jackson is over 100 yards, 109 on the day. And this last 11-yard run into the end zone. And the Beavers now on top, 26-17. A lot of football left in Corvallis. Time now for today's Magnolia moment to lead off its 50th season. Magnolia Hi-Fi has changed its name to Magnolia Audio and Video. The audio and the video of this one, a touchdown for Steven Jackson. And a big lead now for Oregon State. I'm not sure there is such a thing as a big lead for Boise State in the football house. That's a pretty accurate statement. I think you're right. From the five, a big hit in town goes Chris Carr. Goodness. <laughs> He ran into Keller Christensen. Another one of Oregon State's linebackers. A lot of speed. Out. Nothing needs to be said about that kind of hit. That's football. That's pretty. Car is okay, and now Boise State's offense right back to work. First and ten, flags go down. Boise State was not set. 
I don't think Dinwiddie saw his receiver come running onto the field. She was behind him. On the offense, five yard penalty, three first down. The Broncos, like many teams, do the huddle on the sideline and then bring everybody out to the line of scrimmage and snap it quickly. They can catch defenses napping, especially a defense scheming against Dan Hawkins and the Broncos. They're so multiple, you're not really sure what you're gonna get. And they just don't miss a bet. I mean, they try everything and they're good at it. Dinwiddie now on first and 15. Across the middle, got his man, Acre to the 30. He's out to the 39-yard line. T.J. Acre, the, the junior out of Pocatello, who had the long touchdown catch earlier in the ball game. A very slow developing play right here. Great pass protection. Acre comes in from the outside. A little crossing, crossing tandem play, and just makes a nice play right there. And now they're out of the hole. Boise State's on the roll. The 67-yard catch for a touchdown back in that first half. On first and 10, here comes the blitz. Dinwiddie's got time and a man wide open and he overthrew him. Wow, Derek Schumann was absolutely wide open. Well, this the heat is what saved this. The Beavers had a lot of people flying around Dinwiddie or this is possibly even a touchdown. Again, tandem pattern. Two tight ends to the quarterback's right. They crisscross. Oregon State has two defensive backs on one guy, and the Beavers have to thank their pressure. That's a big play again. Second down, 10. Beavers blitzing again. Michael on a draw, and he's blistered by Jonathan Pollard. Bill Swan cut there to finish him off. And it will be third down. And about 10 now for Boise State. We're a minute in to the fourth quarter. If you've just joined us, Oregon State jumped to a 13-0 lead in this one, only to see Boise State come back on a 67-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Dinwiddie to T.J. Acre and a 62-yard punt return for a touchdown by Tim Gilligan. But here in the second half, it's been all Beavers. Third down and 10, another blitz, Dinwiddie time and throwing, it is caught at the 18, Lawrence Beatty, how about that? Wow, what a catch. Looks like he bobbles it, but makes the play. The junior college transfer from Sac City Junior College in Sacramento. Seven step drop, the Beavers are bringing pressure just gets it away and the pass is absolutely perfect. Now look at this, looks like he juggles it, but he holds on to it. That is some catch. Inside the 20 now, first and 10, Boise State. Donnie Heck hit at the 18, maybe a yard. Juan Edwards and Bill Swancutt at the bottom of that pile for Oregon State. Oregon State's been tough in the red zone too this year, Rich. They're around 42% in total on the defensive side of the ball. That's good football. Broncos on the move, Dinwiddie going to the end zone for Acre and it's incomplete. The youngster, Brandon Browner, a redshirt freshman on the coverage. Dinwiddie's numbers today look pretty good. 296 yards, one TD. Oregon State known for their pass defense, and this guy has really been the difference. He's moved around in the pocket and made plays. 640 yards of passing offense in this game. Third down and 10. Dinwiddie back, scrambling and throwing. Caught at the five, how about wow. that? Beatty again. <laughs> he has made two very impressive catches on this drive. This is just sensational. Again, 
you got to go to Dinwiddie. He's the guy that makes this play. Look at, looks both way, goes through his entire pr progression, now makes this throw. Wow. Great catch. Look at that. Got the knee in. First and goal now for the five. Michael cuts in. Hit by Musin. Stopped at the three. Obviously, Boise needs two scores. Oregon State with four field goals in this one. The Broncos have had opportunities to get by them as well. A pair of fourth down conversions that they did not pick up. One from inside the five. Michael, is he in? He is! Touchdown, Boise State. And the Broncos put it in the end zone on a very impressive drive, highlighted by the acrobatic Lawrence Beatty. As Michael puts it in, and the Broncos are back within three points. Well, for Oregon State fans, this has got to be eerily like Fresno State. Hanging close, whack conference team. The only caveat in comparing the two games, I think both sides have played a lot better than in that one. You're right, absolutely on the money on that. David Michael and Boise State back within two. 12 minutes left in this one in Corvallis. Welcome to Oregon State University, home of great minds and the heart of Beaver Nation. In the Conference of Champions, we always have a hometown advantage. This message furnished by Oregon State University. If you haven't met that man, Lawrence Beatty, you should. He just introduced himself to the country with two fabulous catches. And David Michael finished it off. Nine plays, 79 yards. Michael from three yards out. And Boise State is back within two. Rich Waltz, Steve Priest, Candace Kruger. In Corvallis, where night is falling and the lights are taking effect. And we're just getting warmed up in what has been a whale of a ball game so far. Brandon Cantonese for Oregon State. Cantonese to the 18-yard line. Well, how impressive was that drive, and how impressive was Lawrence Beatty on that drive, Steve Priest? Well, the first catch he makes is really almost impossible. This is a good shot. Then when he makes the play again, hangs it out with a perfect pass. But look at this. My gosh, just to hold on to that ball, you know, is amazing. And then later on, again, Dinwiddie makes the play, scrambles to the outside, but that's almost uncatchable when he makes the play. And then Michael finishes it off from three yards out, and the Broncos are in the end zone for the third time. Oregon State right back to work. On first and ten, Derek Anderson flushed out and scrambling. He'll tuck and tiptoe, and let's see if he got the first down. The linesman was knocked over. I don't think he saw where Anderson went out of bounds. The official along the sideline never got to the 28-yard line. He was picked off at about the 20. Nice decision by Derek Anderson and a heck of a nice job. I, I haven't seen him that nimble. And now the officials have to mark it with a conference, you don't often see that. <laughs> it is a first down, an 11-yard pickup. Well, obviously, the, the linesman was on the ground, didn't see the play, so you got to admire him. He, he goes to his official partners and says, hey, did anybody see it? That's the way it's supposed to be done. Good job. You can't throw your hat. You can't throw your bean bag. <laughs> Nothing. No chance. It's an official's nightmare. It's first and 10. Jackson caught and dropped in his backfield. How often have you seen Steven Jackson hit in the backfield, dropped in the backfield? Dave Oldham, the junior from San Diego, 
Boise State is accomplishing what very few Pac-10 teams have been able to accomplish. They really have. I mean, Jackson's over 100 yards. He's at 23-109. But the explosion plays just have not been there. Well, I think that, that again, you go to the, the formation sets that this team has used as you watch Boise State run in, three linemen go into their nickel coverage. Again, Oregon State isn't seeing the same play on defense more than uh, about every other down. Second down, 12. Anderson, lots of time. Over the middle, it's broken up. Nicely done. On the coverage, Gabe Franklin. James Newson, the intended receiver. Wes Nurse was there as well. Excellent pass protection right there. Derek Anderson, again, plenty of time to throw the ball. Two weeks ago, in the loss at Fresno State, Oregon State was abysmal on third down. Last week, much better in the win. These are the third down numbers this week. Four of 15 are the Beavers. On third down, Anderson's throw, and it's incomplete. Newsom was the intended receiver. Newsom has been the intended receiver on just about everything Anderson has thrown today. Well, and that was an excellent route by Newsom. He was wide open. There was some pressure, but Derek Anderson just threw it outside a little bit. Numbers have to be under 50% right now. Derek has, has only thrown 50%, two out of the last 13 games. Toby trying to kick away from Gilligan, and he pins him to the sideline. That's a nice job by the Oregon State special teams and their senior punter, Carl Toby. Gilligan, of course, had the 62-yard touchdown return on a punt earlier in the ball game. And now the Oregon State defense is back out. Ryan Dinwiddie and the Boise State Broncos get the ball down two with 10 and a half minutes left in the game. There's Derek Anderson. You look at him. You know, pretty good day. Again, just barely under 50%, 340 yards, a ton of yards. But again, the percentage has to be something that drives Mike Riley and, of course, Derek Anderson. Nutty is. Here's a great throw. Dinwiddie trying to go up top looking for Tony McPherson. Flags go down. Flags down at the 35-yard line. Well, I don't know. We'll have to look at it again. The ball was well over McPherson's head. Now, whether he was held and unable to get to the ball is another question. Well, you know, as an old defensive back, that that was a pretty clean play. I'm, I'm really surprised, and certainly Mr. Browner feels the same way. Automatic first down. It was not catchable. Take a look and see if we can see exactly where it occurs. Face guarding, is that what he called it? Boy, that's a, that's a stretch. I think that's a real break for Boise State. Yeah, I mean, that not looks like great pass defense. Yeah, the only thing Browner didn't do was turn and find the ball. I think the Broncos got a big break. And let's see if they can do something with it. Dinwiddie throwing on first down, sets up a screen. Michael with a nice miss there. Hit again. Spins to the 45-yard line. When you make Jonathan Pollard and Richard Ziegler miss, you've done something. Even though it was not a big gain, maybe three yards, it was pretty impressive. First screen we've seen today from Boise State. I actually expect, expected to see more. You know, uh, Coach Hawkins, particularly Chris Peterson, out of that system that they love the screen pass. Watch the job in what he does here again. He looks away, gives ground, does all the things a quarterback's supposed to do, and then Michael makes a very nice run. Second down and eight, Dinwiddie's throw. A bullet that is caught in traffic by Jerry Smith. His first catch of the game, and he's hog-tied out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Lawrence Turner made the stop, and the Broncos are rolling again with 9.41 left in the football game. Well, this is a great shot. Dinwiddie just absolutely throws this on a line, and there is great coverage there. Lawrence Turner has it. Really done a job on the receiver, and then when he just puts it absolutely on the money. On first and ten, Michael straight ahead. The Broncos have not run for an awful lot of yardage. Jonathan Pollard makes the stop. 
Boise State is close to about 50 yards for the entire game. But to Chris Peterson's credit, the offensive coordinator, he has stayed with the ground game just to keep Oregon State's defense honest. Right, and he's done so much more to keep Oregon State's defense honest with all those fake reverses. Second down, big play, Richard Ziegler. It's a loss of four. Big players make big plays. This is a big play. Wow. He's got an innate ability to run through at just the right time from that middle backer position. Biggest third down of the game right here. So far. <laughs> this would be about a 49-yard field goal from right here. A third down. Blitz coming. Dinwiddie's throw is incomplete. Flag goes down. Off the cut, Jerry Smith was the intended receiver. He was double covered. Mitch Musin, along with linebacker Trent Bray. And it's a hold against Oregon State. Holding defense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So big, big penalties on the Beaver defense in this drive. Pass interference and a hold. <laughs> the penalties right there at Oregon State. Up to 120 yards, that's not where they'd like to be. Gilligan in motion, Michael gets the ball. And he's hit by three Beavers, Jason Jean Baptiste finished him off. A first down on that play, and now a second down coming up and about 10. Thirty-five thousand in Reeser Stadium. Nineteenth consecutive sellout. Second down. Dinwiddie to the end zone. Deflected and almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Lawrence Beatty, the acrobatic one, was the intended receiver. Lawrence Turner there on the coverage for the Beavers. Remember, Boise State is within two points. They are in field goal range. There are 7.43 left in this football game. Well within Tyler Jones' range, I might add, he hit a kick about 10 yards farther early in the game. Sixth play of the drive. Dinwiddie's in trouble. Scrambling to the 20, and he's out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Oregon State bought a huge break right there. There was a break in coverage. Receiver running right down the middle of the field, totally uncovered. Oregon State's pass rush saved the day. Didn't win probably the first receiver all day I haven't seen him pick up. And now Tyler Jones is on for what will be a 35-yard field goal attempt from a difficult angle for a right-footed kicker. One and two today. One of three today. Wide right. 7.32 left in Corvallis. And Oregon State holds on by the slimmest of margins to their two-point lead. This fall, eight teams will compete for postseason play. Two have already cemented their place in the playoffs. The rest of the matchups too close to call. Fox brings you baseball's division series and then the exclusive home to the championship in World Series. It all begins September 30th on Fox. Rich Waltz, Steve Priest, Candace Kruger.
in Corvallis, Oregon State football, a two-point lead. Steven Jackson is upended again in the backfield. And again, it's a small man that gets through there. Cam Hall, the nickelback, got a hand on Jackson, who is limping noticeably right now. He's had a tough day. He's had a lot of people. It's like running through five tacklers every time he carries the ball. Barley in motion on second and nine. Play action for Anderson. Holding, holding, There's a flag, probably a hole. Anderson scrambling and throws himself at the Bronco defense. He's knocked off his feet at the 24-yard line, but the flag sits back in the backfield. It is a hold, and it does go against Oregon State. And the Beavers are well over 100 yards in penalties now. Well, this puts the Beavers way back. It'll be a, a second, nearly 20 yards with the half the distance call. Holding, Holding. offense, 10-yard Ten Ten penalty, replay second down. A lot on the line in this one, even though it's a non-conference game for Dan Hawkins and Boise State. The Broncos have a 13-game winning streak, second longest in the nation to Ohio State's 18. Oregon State and Mike Riley have not lost a non-conference game at home in a long time. They've won 16 in a row. Steven Jackson just hobbled off the field, Rich. Dwight Wright in, Anderson pumping, looking for Newsom. And it's deflected and incomplete. Boy, if you're Julius Brown and you're five feet 10 and you're on that island battling that man, that can't be a good feeling. Well, excellent play by Brown right there. Stood in there, went up for the ball. Get a good look at it right here. Watch Brown's play. Newsom is so strong. He's got nine catches for 208 yards in this ball game. You mentioned earlier, Oregon State has just not gone to any other receivers. Seems like they just about have to, Rich, sooner or later. Newsom's being doubled as you look at Steven Anderson on the, Steven Jackson on the sideline. Third down, 19. Anderson steps up over the middle. It's caught. How about that? It's Kenny Farley. Just as you said it, even Mike Riley has a smile on that one. Farley's first catch all day, and it's a big one. The Beavers move the sticks, they get some breathing room, and they hold on to the football. Well, this is a great throw by Derek Anderson. First of all, he finds someone else. Now look at this. He just puts this on the money. He's not open too far. That ball right over the middle linebacker, Andy Avalos. Big catch for Farley. Under six minutes now. Broncos show blitz, here they come. Anderson's in some trouble. Little screen pass, Jackson's back in. Makes the catch out of bounds at the 43 yard line, a gain of seven. He sprained his knee last week against New Mexico State. Was questionable this week. He's, he's run for 109 yards today. Set up really well. Nice job getting out there and a great throw. That's a tougher throw than you think, folks. Had to lob it over some people. He doesn't look like he's favoring that strong run right there. Second down three. Jackson. Nowhere to go but straight ahead, and he's short of the first down to the 45-yard line. Paul Allen, the senior out of Boise, Timberlake High School, Timberline High School. I can't make that mistake because the man standing next to me is born and raised in Boise. <laughs> That's right. Now look at this move. When you look at that, you can't believe he's got a problem with that knee. Then you kind of watch him get up here, and he's a little bit ginger on the knee. Third down short. Oregon State from the 45, Jackson on a draw, and he's hit and dropped by Wes Nurse. Right on the sticks, 
flags come down late in the defensive backfield. James Newson and Julius Brown were jawing late. There was a helmet pulled off or thrown off too. Kanan Sanchez, 55, lost his hat downfield. This is a huge penalty, whichever direction this goes. First down for Oregon State. It's a personal foul and it's going against Oregon State. Yeah. The question here is where this will be placed and what the down and distance. That's post possession, which would have been a first down. And the officials are going to talk it over themselves. And Mike Riley wants an explanation as well. It looked like Jackson had enough yardage for the first down, which would mean Oregon State would hold on to the ball. They're going to measure it first and then mark off the penalty. So it is a first down. And now they'll mark it off. At the end of this play, you see a little bit of the action. Don't see it here yet. On the left side of the screen, plays over now. You see Sanchez's helmet come off, and now he goes after the guy. A retaliation foul, and you just can't do that. Cost the Beavers 15 huge yards. You get hit, you lose your hat, you think. You keep it under control as you watch the senior Sanchez. It was Sanchez who committed two crucial personal foul penalties down in the game at Fresno State. And that penalty will move Oregon State over 140 yards in penalty yardage. Still, it's first and 10 from the 32. And with under five minutes, the Beavers are still controlling the ball and the clock. And Anderson to Ewis, who makes the catch at midfield, down to the 41-yard line. way you attack that four four man front with four people behind it as you get three people vertical excellent job of offensive line play and a real fine throw right there from the 41 now of Boise State Oregon State would love to get it the very least three points out of this which would distance themselves by five from the Broncos here comes a blitz. Jackson stopped again at the line of scrimmage. Paul Allen, the first to hit him. And Jackson has earned every one of his 116 yards rushing. Tough day. Tough day for this guy. Well, I'd beg to differ with you, partner. I, I think the Beavers need to get seven points. I, if I were a Beaver, I wouldn't want to be looking at Dinwiddie's gun in the last two minutes. You might be right. 114 yards, 28 carries for Steven Jackson. This is 29th inside the 35, which will bring up third down and a long three. Julius Roberts made the stop. Importantly for Oregon State, whether they get points or not, they have run now almost half of the clock off since they started this possession. That's very important unless they get behind. <laughs> With that carry, Steven Jackson becomes the second all-time rusher at Oregon State. Look at the time of possession on this drive. On third down now, Jackson will get it. Jackson with a leap, and he's got the first down. Wow. What a run right there. That is not for the faint of heart. Steven Jackson headed to the sideline. Another first down for Oregon State. Clock will start once they set the chains. Crowd coming to life. Boy, that's just, that's just a super one-man run right there. Good blocking up front, but look at this. He jumps it. 
Travis Berger just about makes another good play from his linebacker position, 13. First and 10, clock rolling. Boise State has two timeouts left. And right inside the 30. And the Broncos are going to burn a timeout right now. Off that first down play, Oregon State picks up three yards. And so the Broncos get a sense that they need to conserve some clock right now. We'll take a timeout as well with 2.31 left in this football game. Oregon State with the ball and a two-point lead at home. 26-24, Oregon State on top. Beaver football, second down and seven. And Dwight Wright inside the 25, down to the 22-yard line. He's a yard shy of the first down. And Boise State is playing their hand right now. They've burned their final timeout. And they're faced with a third down and maybe a yard here, a little over a yard. So if Dan Hawkins' defense doesn't stop this play on this snap, then Oregon State will be in a great position to run this clock out. Well, Steven Jackson is on the sideline. He is making no attempt with a helmet to get back in this football game, Rich. And that isn't Steven Jackson. So he's got to have some kind of a nick at that knee. There's your timeout story. 2.23 left in this football game. Oregon State with the football and a two-point lead. With the ball sitting just outside the 22, the Beavers have to get just inside the 21. Well, this, this is a situation where you build team right here. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care whether it's Steven Jackson or who, this is the place where the offensive line has to suck it up. Quarterback, everybody. The Beavers have to get this first down if they're going to be a real good football team. Biggest play of the game. It's right, and he is hit and stopped. He's forward. He is right on the sticks. Boy, this is going to be close. You can see the stick top of your screen inside the 21. You can see where the official is standing. It's not the near official. It's the far official that has the spot. And they're going to look it over closely. Boy, this is close. I don't think he has it. Just from where that ball sits. If the mark on the field, you can see that red pad they put down. If that's accurate, I think he's short. And he is short. Now, Steve, here's the question. If you're Oregon State, do you try to make it or do you settle for three points with the danger of it being blocked? Well, I, I think you have to kick the field goal right here. I really do. Uh, you know, Oregon State hasn't got this guy right here, Steven Jackson, for whatever reason. He isn't making the attempt to get into the football game. The only thing you really got right here is a quarterback sneak, as far as I'm concerned, as far as a running play. You can't take the time to go deep into the backfield and hand the football off. You've well, either got to go for it right here with a quarterback sneak, and they're running out of time. Eight. Well, they're, they're going to run the play clock down, eat up some game clock, then call a timeout, and then think of it, which is the right thing to do for Oregon State. Good play. So with a minute 50 left, Oregon State calls a timeout, and now they'll talk about it. Oregon State has one of the best field goal kickers in the Pac-10. Kirk Ilanimi has connected on four of five today, including a 51-yarder. Well, Mike Riley had a call a couple weeks ago whether to kick a field goal or not, and it, it uh, was something he decided to go for it. Listen to his players. At that time, they had Steven Jackson, James Newsom on the sideline saying, go, coach, you got to go, you got to go. He chose to, and it didn't work out. Let's see what they do here. That was down at Fresno State. And it looks like it looks like they're going to go for it. Ilanimi is still on the sideline. Now certainly Oregon State can try to draw Boise State offside as well. They've got a big quarterback in Anderson at 6'6", 230. 
So a quarterback sneak is not out of the question. No Steven Jackson, as you could see. He is not in the football game. Fourth and inches. Anderson up and over. Drop the ball. It's loose. Who's got it? I think they marked it up well, ahead. Well, the officials have stopped the play. And if they stop it and mark it, Oregon State's got the first down. They do. Whoa! This is a huge call by the officials. The fumble obviously would negate the first down. And the officials are saying he was down before the fumble. The field means that forward progress had been stopped prior to the ball coming loose. First down. That's a move I personally, as a football player, just hate that sticking the ball out there. Here's a look. Let's see if his progress was indeed stopped. Boy, that's hard to tell. Wow. He was hit, but you know what? He was still loose. Well, I don't he even. He wasn't wrapped up. I don't even think anybody really hit him. You know, progress is stopped, but you know what? If he holds on to the ball, he's still alive. Yeah, he's still alive, and actually, I think he had the first down if he keeps the ball in. That is a huge break for Oregon State. And the Beavers can essentially run out the clock and win this football game. That was a huge call, gutsy call, by an official, quite frankly. That was a huge call, gutsy call, by an official, quite frankly. But one certainly that is not going over in Boise, Idaho right now. It's one thing to stop your progress, but Anderson certainly wasn't off his feet. He wasn't wrapped up or controlled. He was simply hit and fumbled. And the Beavers are gonna run the clock out barring a fumble here. I'm surprised they're even handing this football off. Third well, down right now. And on the next snap of the ball, Oregon State will have won this football game. You can hear the anger coming from the Boise State sideline. And the relief coming from the Oregon State sideline. Anderson takes the knee. Oregon State will win this football game in a very controversial ending. Steven Jackson and the rest of the Beavers will go to three and one, but this certainly, certainly was no easy task. Dan Hawkins at Boise State with nothing to be ashamed of. The Broncos taste defeat for the first time this year. And Hawkins and Jackson meet at midfield. Heck of a coach right there. Here's another look. Now progress is stopped. But he was simply hit. He was not wrapped up. He was not down. He is still alive. I think it's fair to say the officials okay, blew that call. Go, I do too. I agree with you totally. But there were a lot of calls that went both ways on this night. What a football game we had tonight in Corvallis. And Oregon State survives 